he is currently asleep. So I can't really speak really loud. Because he just went down. But this is my new puppy. So yeah, I can't really talk really loud. I will pass him off. He's asleep right now. Yeah, so this is where we're at right now. He loves being kind of all squished up. Yeah, he just went down. He just went down for a nap. So we will get into some stuff. ASMR edition. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding here. Let me just try to scroll through some stuff while I'm getting a little bit distracted. All right, welcome into Josh. Thank you so much for being first. Hello, hello, light shadow. Uh, hi to Michael as well uh, and to Happy. Uh, Tyler, hello, waited all day for this. Oh, that is so awesome. Gamers Eater, I hope everyone has their emergency, their emergency induction port ready. I know I do. And I know my new puppy does as well. So for those who are curious, because a few people have asked about him, um, he is a charcoal Labrador and he is eight weeks old. He's so adorable. I love him. Um, and his name is Sham. So it's S-H-A-A-M, which means dark cloud. And since he's a, he's a charcoal lab, we thought that'd be a, a, a good choice. So here you go, baby. So yeah, and I love him so much. Like he's literally, I, I, I've known him now for like five days. He is just like the walking embodiment of my heart. Like I love him so much. Um... Hello, hello, Cameron. Welcome in, as well as to Dorothy. Good afternoon slash evening. Yeah, it's uh, afternoon here. It is afternoon. And welcome in to Bronwyn as well. Um, Arkala, damn, this move music gives me goosebumps. I was just sitting here, yeah, and I was like, you know, wondering if if my little boy, Sham here, would uh, sleep to it. But luckily, I have my headphones in, <laughs> so we'll have to find out. We'll have to find out another time. Uh, welcome into Legendary Yobi. Great to see you in here. Uh, Evil and Seven sounds really interesting, to be honest. Maybe helping Cerberus gain more uh, power since the galaxy is still recovering, maybe. I will be getting into that. Oh, his little head is like moving like a shit. He's being so good, guys. <laughs> he's being so good. You should see him. He's he's not always like this. And I don't want to move his head too much because if I move my arm, like this is how he sleeps. He sleeps on your arm, and if you try to move it, he will grumble. So I will eventually be passing, passing my little boy off here to uh, to my roommate outside, and we'll see we'll see what happens. Um, but yes, we will be getting into the evil N seven stuff. And for those who are watching this <laughs> recorded, I'll add the I'll add the chapter as well for when uh, for when we start. Oh, shoot, it is happening where I, I lost it. He's so cute, guys. He is so cute. Welcome into Blur Music. Hope you're doing well. Uh, takes to no games. Love this little guy. He's so cute. Consoles and handhelds in the back. Yes, 100%. I can go into that more later as well. No waking the baby. Exactly. No waking the baby. <laughs> the puppy. Oh my God. <laughs> guys, I have turned into like a puppy parent overnight. And I just, I, I just absolutely, I can't. <laughs> Again, he's, he's, he's like my little heart. He's like my little heart in doggo form. I don't know if you guys can hear his breathing. I could try shifting him right before I hand him off so you can so you can hear him. Uh, and Beth, good evening. And sorry, I hope you got my apology. I did, Beth. Absolutely. It, you, there was nothing to apologize for. Like, honestly, the the Dragon Age uh, Dreadwolf release thing, it's all good. And I'm pretty sure me, Tim, and Craig were more just, you know, having a good time and just being like, were we live when this dropped and stuff? So... Absolutely no worries. Um, Mihan has said a hot take. I think being evil would not be would not be cool, but playing as righteous and seven, and then later realizing we've been tricked by bad actors in the chain of command would be awesome. Uh, Mihan, hold that thought. I'd love to discuss that uh, as soon as I as soon as I pass off my little doggo here. They're just pure love beings, exactly. 
Exactly. Welcome in, Dan the Man. Hail to all specters in the chat. Heck yeah. What's your favorite console that you have on your shelves? Um, I would have to say, because I can't use my other arm because it's taken up by Sham, but it is definitely the GameCube right over there. Um, that was my first console. That was my first console, and my first game on it was Super Smash Bros, which you can't see it in the shot, but the original physical copy is somewhere up on those shelves there. And I fell in love with gaming because of because of that game and just playing with my friends and we were all kind of stuck inside because, you know, Canada and blizzards and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that's, that's my favorite console on the shelves. If you guys want to ask some questions, we'll probably do a 30 minute Q&A. Um, it can be about things on my shelves. It could be about my little doggo, uh, anything Mass Effect related. And then I will be getting into the um, into the actual like theory stuff and I want to I want to throw a theory by you guys on the N7 potentially being evil and why that would actually be very good for the franchise if they want to follow a certain um uh plot thread. Uh shoot it. Hmm. He's starting to doze off. He's a, he was asleep before I went live. He was asleep before I went live. Jordan Wolf, hello, hello. Welcome in. Sean loves streaming as much as Atharia. He's already an old pro at modifying mic settings. Guys, I have a hilarious story to tell you guys. Oh my goodness. Well, it's hilarious to think about now, but you know, absolutely. And Jordan, yes, new to chat. Anybody that is just popping in here and is just chilling, like lurking in the background, absolutely all good if you just want to, if you just want to lurk and stuff like that. Oh, it's okay, baby. Um, but if you want to join in on the conversation, please do. We are an awesome community and you can post literally any theory in the chat. Like you guys know my crazy theories. So please don't, uh, uh, don't feel uh, afraid or anything like that. And I've had a few commenters also, you know, say things like, uh, pardon my English and stuff like that. I am good with anything. Like English is my first and only language and I suck at it. So don't feel bad if like you're worried about spelling or anything like that. Like, please just feel free to join in the conversation because... I just want this to be a space where we can all, you know, discuss all of our all of our crazy theories and stuff like that. So, uh, but thank you so much, Jordan, for uh, for joining the chat today. Why does YouTube tell me this video is going to be about Star Citizen? I have no idea. Blur music. I got mine in my lap watching your puppy. Oh, Jade, that's so adorable. Give your your pup a little some scratches from me. Oh, those heads kind of falling falling out. Of oh, I'm sorry, baby. Oh, big stretch. Want to be passed out now? He's not going to be passed out. So, yeah, I think I'm going to pass him off because I want to chat with you guys now. And I think I'm going to pass him in a bit. Okay, I don't know. I don't want to put it down. So, I'm just going to just chill. Oh no, I'm throttling myself. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm, I'm strangling myself, but it was for a good cause, guys. <laughs> the things you do for puppies. Guys, I just, this puppy is my everything, okay? And now I can finally bring out my coffee because I was afraid that he was going to get into that. But uh, yeah, guys, thank you so much for being here. Um, and I just, I love my dog so much. <laughs> I could literally cry about him. I love him so much. Okay. Um, let me just get into a comfy position over here and then make sure I don't knock over my ring light. I was convinced that he was going to come in here like a wrecking ball and uh, knock over my ring light and like start drinking my coffee, but he's so good. Okay. Let's scroll up, catch up with you guys. Um, next Mass Effect should 100% have a puppy for a pet, Cameron. Like, 
I am convinced if they just add, because you know, every like uh, in the Citadel DLC, right? The part where Jack gets a, a, a Varen like puppy almost. And then uh, Shepard is throwing like a frying pan like in their apartment. Oh my God, it, it kills me. I really want to romance Jack so that I can specifically see that moment um, to see how it changes. And, you know, does, does the Varen pup, I think he named, uh, or uh, uh, Jack named uh, uh, the pup Izo, right? I think, I think that's why, that's why somebody mentioned, did you name, did you name the, the doggo Izo? Um, the exclusive during the stream would have been awesome though. Yeah, it takes to know games. That would have been great. That would have been, that would have been hilarious. Um, just don't want anything huge like the Reapers yet. I always thought Spectres should have a little evil side to them. I mean... It'll, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting, and we'll definitely get to it. Also, let me get my music going, because you guys are just not hearing anything here. Let me turn on my desktop audio. I have the full Mass Effect soundtrack, by the way, guys, on Spotify. So if you guys have something specific in mind, we can do that. Uh, let me start here. I love this Citadel underbelly from the uh, Citadel DLC. It's just, it's so, it's such a banger, you know? It has some mystery to it. It's got some edge. That's at a good volume. Let me know if that's too loud. Okay. Um, let me put a 20 minute timer on for more Q&A stuff. And then we can, uh, after that, I will jump into the Evil N7 theory and why it would actually be a very good thing for the franchise. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let me get my thingy open here, guys, so I can actually click on your guys's things okay this thing's behind let me refresh it oh man i won't be able to click on your guys's stuff rip okay um i'll just i'll just read out the questions because i, I kind of missed my opportunity here to to click it um also hang on hang on guys i was super excited to do this at the start of stream uh for everybody in here you guys are going to get a chance to uh, become a paragon prime member so you guys will get uh, access early access to my videos I usually post the videos on Friday and then the public, like I make it go public on Monday. However, I have a new puppy and I have a very, very long video. The one where I attempt to solve the Mass Effect 3 endings, um, which is, you know, a solid 15 minute video. And I think I've gone over it before, but usually the average calculation is a minute of video it takes about an hour of editing. And I don't really have 15 hours. <laughs> before Friday because new puppy. So the video might come out Saturday for my members. I apologize for that. Um, but you will always get at least one day's early access. So let me gift out some uh, Paragon Prime memberships for you guys. Enjoy, enjoy. Oh my goodness, dude, takes to no games. What am I talking about? You already told me you were Craig. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, of course you're Craig. See, again, like I, I feel like because of my new puppy, I had, I originally had three brain cells, okay? Now, now I only have like one and a half. So I apologize, Craig. <laughs> but yeah, guys, I was talking to Craig uh, during the, um, during a, a stream the other day. And let me just gift out the other uh, five right now. There you go, guys. Oh no, I'm using my, <laughs> I'm using my puppy voice. I accidentally used my puppy voice. I apologize. It's just on my mind. Uh, so there you go, guys. Enjoy uh, Samuel Chambers, Mud Shark, Light Shadow Onyx, William, uh, PD Fulton, um, as well as Bronwyn, G. Uliana, uh, Grit, uh, Dorothy, as well as Lorenzo. You guys are going to have early access to my videos for the entirety of um, next month, I believe. Um, up until I think like a month happens. So enjoy those. You guys are in for a treat. You guys are going to get early access to two of the more crazier videos I think I've, I'm going to do on the channel. One where I solve the Mass Effect 3 endings. It's a little bit more of like a hypothetical thought experiment is how I kind of like to think of it. Um, as well as uh, the thing that I have been kind of hyping up for like a month now with my trailer breakdown at 2.0, where I 100% I'm going to confirm that it's Alcara and some pretty, you know, some pretty logical thinking as to why uh, Shepard would be returning. 
in the next game. So enjoy those guys. It's, it's gonna it's it's a good month. It's a good month to be a Paragon Prime member. Let's let's put it that way. Alrighty, let's get to the questions. Okay, so uh, apologies that I can't click on your questions uh, because I did something dumb in the chat. Um, so, uh, I'll just read it out here. So, uh, Gamesator Gaming, uh, how would you feel if Shepard did make a return, but as the villain? Very, very interesting question. And I will try to keep my answers brief because I only have 16 minutes before jumping into the next thing here. Um, very interesting question. I think I've addressed this before. Um, at this point, at this point, I am fairly convinced that Shepard is going to return. And I think that... It's highly unlikely that Shepard would return as the villain. Also, just excuse the little the little gift thing over here. I don't I don't know why it says new subscriber too, because you're technically a member. Just ignore that. Ignore that. Um, <laughs> it's, it's 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 a weird alert. Um, but yeah, I am fairly convinced that Shepard is going to return. Um, but I think it would be a very it would have to be handled very intricately. Um, in terms of making Shepard the villain, because to have three games of a very beloved trilogy, where then you know, um, <laughs> you're you're gonna make you're gonna make that beloved hero the villain, it's gonna have to be written very very well. Um, so again, it would depend on how it was written, but my initial reaction to that is I don't like it, um, because I just love Shepard as the hero too much, and I don't mind like you know renegade Shepard like. You know, like almost, like very almost, almost like kind of villainy where, you know, like they'll they'll kick somebody off a building. But um, my initial reaction to that is uh, probably, probably not, probably not. Um, and also Josh, oh my goodness, thank you so much for joining Paragon Prime, member for one month. Uh, really, really appreciate that. And you, Josh, are going to be in for a treat as well, because these ones you're, you're, you're going to want early access to, I can tell you that. For context, guys, the trailer breakdown video is the longest video ever on my channel. Like it's gonna be, I think, 40 minutes. And if you're if you've been around town, if you've been around this block, on average my videos are about eight minutes. So it's super, super packed. I put a lot into it. Um, and I'm 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 gonna I need I need to record it still. Because I did try recording, and I tried recording with my doggo in my lap. That was a disaster, because he messed with my mic. <laughs> And I watched, I listened to the whole thing back and it was just really bad. But anyway, anyway. Okay, so Josh joined and also asked a question. With current games being more fully customizable, do you think the next Mass Effect game will do the same? I do think so, Josh. I definitely think so. Because, um, yeah, I was looking at like, I was looking at uh, Dragon's Dogma 2, for example, with the character customization and like Baldur's Gate 3 character customization. You could do like anything you wanted. You know, like body shape, face, just like tattoos, like all of it, all of it. Um, so I definitely think from a character customization perspective, I think that the next Mass Effect has to because that's become kind of the industry standard for RPG um, games, especially the action RPG or, you know, like adventure RPG, I guess, um, in the genre. That's the standard. Um, in terms of because you just kind of phrased it with more fully customizable, I don't think that the game is going to be like fully like um like like fit formed to to every single person's playthrough. Like I think we're all going to still experience a linear plot because I just don't see how you could do it otherwise. Like they're not going to be able to write 10 to 20 different plots. Um because that like it just it doesn't make much sense, you know? And I guess I'm being a little spoilery for my upcoming video dropping on uh, hopefully this Friday, probably Saturday for members and April 1st for everybody else. Um, but I do think that you're going to need to have at least the same protagonist and you're going to need to have at least the same villains, like across all playthroughs. So in terms of plot, I would say that's going to be linear in terms of character customization and stuff like that. Definitely customizable. And thank you so much again for becoming a uh, Paragon Prime member. It's it's going to be a good good month for that. Okay, he's going to be huge, right, Jane? Oh, I'm 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 excited. I love huge doggos. What if you get a, a doggo supporting character in the next Mass Effect game? I love that as well, Josh. Because I mean, I, I jump into Dragon Age Origins and we instantly get like a doggo companion. Oh man, I just I wish I could talk to my doggo. 
because the only reason I don't include my dog in, in my, uh, sorry, my, what are they called? Mabari? The only reason I don't include my Mabari uh, doggo uh, as character, like in my squad, is because they don't talk. <laughs> so I'm missing out on dialogue with, you know, my companions. It's the only reason I don't, I don't take my doggo. Welcome in, uh, Elvis. Commander Shepard went back. Wait, went back where? Your theory about Shep being the catalyst still blows my mind. Oh, dude, Craig. Yeah, I... Again, I was convinced, guys. The elevator started taking Shepard up in the very last part of the game, and I'm like, Shepard's the catalyst. Shepard's the catalyst. And then the real catalyst rocked up. And I was like, dude, Shepard was sitting right there. I just... Yeah, anyway. Anyway, if you want my full thoughts on that, on Shepard being the catalyst, go check out, uh, I believe it is on Ploppy's channel. I, I linked it in one of my community community uh, posts. Um, yeah, that, that was hilarious on my first playthrough of Mass Effect 3. Um, Samuel, I'm still wondering if the aging star in Mass Effect 2 was because someone needed to convert it into a black hole as a power source for a new relay. That is an awesome thought. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't know if they know because obviously Drew Carpishan was in charge of Mass Effect 2. Also, could I could I click things now? I can't click things yet on my chat here, so I could have it appear. Um, that's an excellent point, Samuel. I'm not sure they that would 100 percent be like a retcon thing, because obviously Drew Carpishan, who wrote Mass Effect 2, was the lead writer. Um, and he left, I believe, either during or right after that game came out. Um he was the one who had the dark energy uh, plot threads and like uh, things kind of sorted out. Um, so then obviously he left and then that pled plot thread kind of died in Mass Effect 3. It just didn't return. So I think it was more a Drew Carpishan thing, but they could totally do a retcon and bring back that uh, sun turning into a black hole. Like, I, I'm, I'm not sure, but yeah, like he, he, he sure. <laughs> Um, I could see it happen, definitely. Um, there's a whole bunch of like concept art and stuff like that, but in terms of evidence, I would say not. We, we haven't seen anything yet, but it could totally happen. Also, Jane, this is the best stream ever. Oh, thank you so much. I mean, this one specifically because I brought I brought my little Sham into the stream, a hundred percent. Bronwyn, I don't know if I posted this theory here. One of mine is that the old man at the end of Mass Effect 3 was telling tall tales to the kid and he had no idea what happened at the end of Mass Effect 3. That's really funny. <laughs> I, that's my copium. No, that's great. That is absolutely great. Um, and also, oh my goodness, thank you so much, Blur Music. You've gifted a Paragon membership um, over to Jerome. So Jerome, enjoy that. Uh, was it, uh, was it, was it, a, was it a Paragon Prime? How do I, how do I check this? I can, uh, okay, I can't really check that. But uh, if you were gifted a uh, Paragon Prime, then enjoy the um, enjoy the early access. And if it was just a, an average Joe uh, Paragon light, then enjoy the emotes, by the way, because uh, you guys do have access to, to emotes. Okay. Um, strangled for the love, legendary, literally. <laughs> Michelle, beautiful puppy that you have there. Thank you so much, Michelle. I really appreciate that. He is going to be the handsomest boy. And his eyes, like... It, it, it kills me, guys. It absolutely just kills me. Oh, now we need Shepard back. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I am full. Uh, guys, I am one of the like lead conductors on the train of bring Shepard back. Like, I would do anything. I just, I need closure. I need closure. That's it. I just, I need closure. And I need blue little children, okay? Like, I just, I'm desperate. I am desperate. Hello, hello, Mudshark. Uh, hello, ladies, lads, and others. Doggo's really internet, yes. Puppy love is true love. It honestly is. Uh, Kevin, wasn't they an animal company that you can have? The Varen? Uh, the, the, uh, or Kevin, I'm not sure if this is what you're talking about, but on to Chanka in Mass Effect 2, you can get a Varen to follow you like a little doggo. <laughs> it's very adorable. Um, and also, Mihan, also to expand on the idea, say half of the plot were being tricked and then slowly unravel the conspiracy and embark on busting the actual evildoers in the Alliance military. Mihan, that's actually a lot closer. Like, if you've read everything and consumed all of the books and comics and stuff, that's actually a, a, a very solid theory and a very solid idea for what could happen. Because 
if you do read the um, Mass Effect, I always screw it up. I think it's Initiation. Yeah, it's not Initiative because that's Andromeda Initiative. If you read Mass Effect, um, uh, I'm going to screw it up in my head again, Initiation. Um, I would highly recommend that book to everybody, by the way, even if you aren't a Mass Effect fan. N.K. Jemisin killed it when she wrote that book. So please just go read it. Um, but yeah, uh, Mihan, that that book would definitely help with your theory. And if you haven't read it yet, maybe go read it and then uh, and then uh, comment or or just let me know your comments here. What do you think about that? Evil Spectres ever heard of a chap named Saren? Yeah, they have done that. But what if it comes back, right? You'll see mementos or touches added to your personal space from your partner. Samuel, 100%. Definitely. I'd love that. Like, I loved it in Mass Effect 2 because, obviously, I romanced Liara because, you know, it's 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 the ship. <laughs> just joking. You can you can romance whoever you want. It's just, you know, I am a Liara mancer, true and true. But the little Liara picture, which I know would be Caden or Ashley. <laughs> but I really appreciated seeing that one little picture of Liara there. Um, because, yeah, it's just, it's a nice touch, you know? It's a really nice touch. And then when she gives you the, the doggo tags, it's not doggo tags, it's dog tags. <laughs> I automatically replaced the word dog with doggo, guys, help me. Um, dog tags. Uh, Shepard does not have doggo tags. They have dog tags. Um, I really enjoyed that being on the desk as well. It was very smart. The Silent King, welcome in. How would you feel about a Krogan romance in the next game? 100%, I would support that. Like a lot of people have said and asked uh, Krogan romance, uh, synthetic romance, like, like a Geth romance or something like that. 100%, like it should just, it should be a thing. I feel like the only reason they didn't go there was because they wouldn't know how to animate the romance scenes. That's just a pure guess, <laughs> you know, because I just, I don't know. Like, I, I, I haven't seen the other romance scenes because I, I just want to play out the, the whole story and then kind of witness it then as opposed to uh, YouTubing it. Um, but I feel like that might be a factor. Because, like, you know, what what are you going to do with, 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 with a geth, right? I just, you know, you, you could certainly do things. It's just I don't know if they wanted to go there. So that's, I think that they should do it, though. I do think that they should do it. All the romances, man. All the romances. I hope they bring back uh, Commander Shep back to Mass Effect 4 or 5. 100%. I'm convinced, guys. I am convinced. Also, Jordan Wolf Liara's theme. Definitely. I am taking music requests, by the way. So hit me with it. Scroll all the way to the DLC. Where is it? Where is it? Oh. Wow, this is very long. We are seen. Oh, it's so good. I can't. I honestly can't. I remember hearing this after <laughs> after I realized that Shepard was going to die. And I was like, okay. Now I can cry to this now. There's a new song I can cry to. <laughs> Games Ryan has been talking about that new relay. I have thoughts on the new relay, so I don't want to discuss it yet. Also, guys, I'm super behind. I'm going to have to start scrolling. Definitely starting to think that no endings will be canon either now. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, no worries, Bronwyn. Enjoy that. And I'm new here. Welcome in, Michael. I'm so sorry that I, uh, I, didn't, uh, I didn't welcome you in. The Shepherd Tees, guys. I'm excited. I'm excited. And Michelle, in our Mass Effect, Shepherd lives at the end of three. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of like mods and stuff like that that could totally um, uh, uh, support that. I, I mean, I've gone over it before. I'm personally not a fan of all of Perfect Destroy. It's complicated. It's really complicated. I'm probably going to make a video about it at some point. So I'll, I'll tackle that then. <laughs> I'm just going to scroll and see. If you guys have any more questions. Could be that you play as someone who is the who is an enemy of Shepard, so technically, oh, he's the villain of the game. I see. I see what you mean there. I don't think he's gonna be renegade, but he's gonna be on uh his own side working for his own purpose. Great theory, great theory. 
Uh, does Paragon Prime come with free shipping? I'm so glad that's, uh, that, Craig, you made that joke because I was struggling to come up with names for what to call the tiers because you have to name your tier something. Like, it doesn't let you not. So I really wanted to have light and I really wanted to have elite. And then I was like, what the heck is the third one going to be called? So I, I chose Paragon Prime because alliteration. That's the only thing. That's the only thing. Here's another idea. Shepard can act like a villain towards the protagonist, but later realize they're on the same side. That fits perfectly into the N7 agent villain redemption story. <laughs> I'm here for it, Mihan. I am here for it. I just... There's... This is actually a great a great opportunity, I guess, to, to bring up this point. There's a lot of theories that I have that I haven't shared with you guys because I either don't have, like, at least bare minimum, like, two or three pieces of evidence to back it up. Like, sometimes it's just off of vibe. <laughs> it's just off of vibe alone. So the theories that you guys hear from me are just the ones that I personally haven't been able to poke holes in my own theory as well as um, uh, uh, I, I have enough somewhat evidence to, to back up the theory. Otherwise, I have pure crazy, like crazier than the crazy theories you already hear about. That's just based on vibe. Um, so there's just a, a great, a great point off of that because 100%. Like, I love seeing all of your guys' theories and stuff like that because um, I have the exact same ones. <laughs> That I'm just like, 100%. It could be anything at this point, right? Love your theory. So here's one for you. It's not a timeline jump, but a merger. I It, it could be, right? Like, I, I don't have anything that could refute that. And I wouldn't even want to. So 100%. Indoctrinated Shepherd. Um, shoot, I missed it. I missed it. I missed it. Indoctrinated Shepherd. Villainous turn was an early uh, Mass Effect 3. Oh, that's a great point, hey? Cult of Shepard, yes. 100%. Wait, what just happened? What is happening right now? What has happened? Blur Music has just given out five more membership. Can I play? Do I know? Do I know what type of... This is all I'm seeing. I'm just seeing this. Oh, and then this thing is blocking. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on one sec. YouTube alerts? You're gonna go chill up here. Oh no, I'm using my puppy voice. Um, <laughs> thank you so much, Blur Music. That is awesome. I really hope that those were uh, Paragon Prime, but regardless, guys, enjoy those uh, hamster emotes of the elusive ham. Um, whenever you see those in chat, that is that is what's the, <laughs> the name of the little hamster there. Um, so enjoy those, enjoy those. And especially if it's Prime, look out for those two videos in April. It's gonna be fun. All right, guys, the timer is done. So I'm just going to do a quick scroll through looking for comments uh, or about questions. And then I am going to hop in to the Evil N7 theory, which I'm very excited to swing by you guys and get your thoughts on. Uncanny suit doggo would eat my space hamster, though. That is a good point. That is an epic point. See, I don't have a space hamster, so that's why I can have a doggo. So I can fetch you a staff in the game if you rake him for what? Oh, really? Wait, is that in Origins? Okay, okay. BRB, gotta get my sushi. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Wait, the space hamster is a Baldur's Gate 1 reference? Are you serious, Happy? I had no idea. I legit had no idea. Okay, guys, and I have had... I'm at the end. Finally, I've caught up to chat. Record time, 39 minutes. I have a theory that the N7 in the trailer says something when they turn around with how their head moves. Byra decided to mute it last minute to keep the character mysterious. Very interesting theory, uh, Blaze. And again, Blaze, welcome to the chat. I feel like you have provided a few very, very interesting theories that uh, it gets, it definitely uh, uh, makes my three brain cells think about it for, for, for a second. Um, I don't know. I guess we'll get to it. I really feel like the head nod is more just like a, a vibe thing. Obviously, I can't say anything to it, right? Like, it's... who knows? Like, um, it feels like, if anything, they would say only, like, one word or something, though. So I don't really know. I honestly don't know. Um, yeah, like... I guess we'll discuss it. You know what? Later, later, guys, we're gonna do a... 
what do you think the N7 did say? We'll do a right answers version and then we'll do a wrong answers version. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> that could be a lot of great answers. It has to be only one word though. That's the, uh, uh, that's the fun pit. Also, I totally forgot to uh, mention uh, and uh, call out to the people that got the, that got the, the memberships. Where are you guys? Uh, enjoy those. Isra, Brandon, Drazam, Chaos Killer, Scott. Uh, oh yeah, and Scott, that is fine. Enjoy those guys. Hope that you uh, enjoy those. Early vids, oh my goodness, thank you so much, Blur Music, for getting those. Like, I am so pumped for all of you guys. <laughs> like, legit, I am gonna try to edit this to the best of my ability, and I hope I hope that it's worth it. I hope that it's worth it. I'm, I, I had a blast writing the script, I gotta say. I had a blast. <laughs> One of my favorite scripts that I wrote. Alrighty, guys. Um, I'm not seeing anything else here. Okay, I'm going to read one more. One more, and then I'm going to jump into the thing. Uh, Osama has said, I believe the N7 agent can be an ally or a villain, depending on how you interact with the character, either a Paragon route or a Renegade route if they bring back the Paragon. Yes, that is a great thought, especially because if I had to provide any piece of evidence to kind of back up that thought, um, the N7, the new N7's coat, it feels very like, I think Kala in her videos, you could see the Paragon symbol in there, but just the stripes and like the, the redness and the, the just the, the classic Paragon and, and, and Renegade, like the blue and red on it, could have just been a a straight, you know, color design choice, but it, it could be. It honestly could be. I'm convinced that the new N7 is evil, but again, that's me and I will be going over why I think that uh, in a little bit. Don't see the elusive ham emojis. Yeah. So you need to, if you are a member, even if you're just a light member, um, yeah, type in colon and then para. Yeah. And like, like Fang has said right there. Thank you so much, Fang. And you will see the, the emotes pop up. Okay. Para's not working? Well, then YouTube lied to me because YouTube told me that that would work. Browse on emote list. Should be on top. Oh, wait, it has to it has to be underscore para? Okay, I'll fix that. I'll fix that. Perfect amount of time in that nod for I should go. I'll try to see if I can... The correct answer is I should go. But if it's only one, if it's only one word though, guys, with the nod, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Go for the optics. Is also tally up for saying boo. Yes, the miniature giant... Uh, we want to mention a giant, a giant space hamster? Wait, you mean, you mean, um, uh, her thingamabob, right? I, I'm blanking on Tally's name. Chica or something like that? I feel like it's her little robot name. Different para like cat emojis? Oh, okay. Okay. Welcome in Wandering Fool. Shepard survives as a Citadel AI, which you download into the body of your own design, maybe? <laughs> I'm here for it. I, look, I don't care how Shepard comes back. I just need Shepard back. That, that's where that's where we're at okay that's the desperation level that we're at all right okay guys let's go over to the the good old uh thing here good old uh the recent n7 day teas and i want to kind of uh let me get into the shot here i want to kind of go over something with you guys because i have not kind of gone over this in video form um i generally try to reserve more the ideas i put in the live streams as like you know didn't really feel fully like I had enough evidence to support this, but it is something that I want to ask you guys because it's more, it's more a vibe. It's more a vibe. So with this new N7, um, and let me pause the music actually, because I want to take you guys through why I think the, the new N7 is evil <laughs> in case you guys are jumping in here for the first time, or uh, you didn't catch the video where I broke it down. I think I broke it down over like three different videos. So, um, let's just listen to the music, right? Let's just listen to it full through. And I'll tell you guys how I kind of analyzed this. Um, let's just give it one little listen through. Apologies. So that's kind of the vibe, right? 
Like for me, the music is a huge part of trying to identify who this character is and what their vibe is. And when you kind of listen to the lead up, it definitely sounds like it's it's on the edge, right? Could be Paragon-y, could be Renegade-y. But it's the moment where they actually turn around where it, it almost sounds like a reaper horn, you know, like or a reaper roar, where it just, it does not give me good vibes. It doesn't even give me like mysterious vibes. Like, oh yeah, this person could be cool. The way that they landed this music to me feels very like, this is a bad guy. So that was my first thought when I was kind of breaking this down. Just to listen to that lead up again and then the initial turn and then you're like, no, 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 You know, like you thought it was Shepard and... And then that little like, you know, that little drawn out like, like, it gives me personally evil vibes. So I looked into it. So I looked into it and I don't think I have, I don't think I have my pictures here, unfortunately, but let's just take a look at this, uh, this new N7's collar. One of the things that I kind of went through in my kind of breakdown is the fact that this N7 has an extremely high collar. Um, and I tried to kind of go through and uh, figure out, you know, wh why would the devs do something like this? Like, like who, which other characters kind of have high collars? Wh what do high collars represent? Because it's obviously the biggest part of this character, right? They turn, look at their collar, right? Look at their collar. Oh my God, the wrong music. We are not listening to Farewell and Into the Inevitable. Get me out of here. I think we were on Novaria. <laughs> Save me. Okay. <laughs> Just ignore that. Yeah, ignore that emotional breakdown. Um, so I kind of was looking into it. And high collars are generally used on bad guy characters. Um, and I really wish I could pull up. You know what? I think I might be able to pull up. Give me, give me one second, guys, so I can use my own video here. It's kind of like a... Thing... Come on. Here, this one. And then I think I posted it in November. Seven is antagonist, probably. Open. Okay. So, let me... There we go. Okay. So, go over. <laughs> I love watching my own videos back because I... I have a blast editing it. Here we go. Okay, so here we go. The coat, right? So, the high collar. It's always used in instances of bad guys. So example number one, Dracula. Relatively, it's not as pronounced, right? Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Look at that high collar. It's very pronounced. It's very like, ha ha ha, I'm evil and I want to rule the world or whatever the heck <laughs> she wanted. I don't even know what she wanted, but she had an extremely high collar. Even in Loki, obviously less pronounced, but in this N7, very, very pronounced. Um, so, and it's called, yes, thank you so much, past me. It's called the High Collar of Doom. Now, the other characters that have a High Collar of Doom-ish in Mass Effect are characters like Thane and characters like Arya. Obviously, both good guys. So, me saying that this N7 is a bad guy, don't take that as fact. Like, this is just my theory and it's not confirmed in any way. However, it is super pronounced on this character. And obviously I'm bringing in with this theory, a lot of my own biases, like the fact that I think Shepard is gonna come back. And I do think that Shepard will be the protagonist, obviously not confirmed. So I'm just naturally inclined to believe this character is a bad guy because of my other past biases and you know, my other theories. Um, but also there is, solidly like I, I go back to the music the vibe of when this n7 turns is extremely like what the heck is going on here like it's just it doesn't give it doesn't give me personally protagonist vibes could easily be the protagonist i'm still gonna be buying the game you know like it's it's not like if, if it's not an evil n7 i'm gonna be absolutely crushed like i don't care i do these theories for fun um so those are the reasons why i do think that this n7 is evil and obviously other crazy theories you know i do think that the n7 synthetic but 
We don't have to go into that here because I've already done that, I think, in my, my first stream of the year. Um, so those are my theories for why the N7 might be evil. Now, the new stuff that I wanted to discuss with you guys is the N7 being evil could actually be a really good thing for the franchise because there is a whole bunch of things, specifically in the merch shop, like in the Bioware gear store and just all over the place that have things that are specifically N7, um, N7 branded, right? Like if I just hop back over to Cam, I'm wearing my N7 hoodie. I have an N7 banner on the side. I have an N7 cup. Like N7s are traditionally the thing that Bioware and, you know, the Mass Effect franchise has kind of centered around as being the, the thing that we all want to be, right? But what if the N7 is evil? And here's the crazy theory part that I can't really back up. It's just a vibe. Because I was thinking, right, if the N7 is evil, what if a plot thread in the next game could be something along the lines of there's an evil N7, could be potentially other bad N7s, kind of saren esque like, you know, bad Spectre, kind of have to root out the bad Spectre, bad N7, have to root out the bad N7. And you kind of have to potentially maybe as Shepard, that's just a me pipe dream thing. You playing as a good guy, probably human, um, have to kind of reform the N7 program and kind of root out the evil. So you can kind of form it into a program that's actually like based on like Shepard's values and stuff, you know, kind of like how how Shepard was grooming, not grooming, but like um, kind of helping along like James becoming an N7. What if something like that happens in the next game? And the whole point of having an evil N7 could be to eventually move past Shepard or move past, you know, whoever the new N7 is and kind of make the N7s the protagonists moving forward all the time. Because everything across all of the branding, across all of the merch are N7 based. So what if they're doing, you know, something like this where the N7 is just, oh shoot, we're hearing the, <laughs> we're hearing the audio for the thing. The N7 is kind of eviler, and we kind of have to reform the N7 program to be good. And that way we can move past Shepard because there'll be linearity between Mass Effect games. You will always be an N7. And the one other, the one other point before I get to chat, apologies, I've been ranting like forever. It's just I've been thinking about this for a long time. Um, the one other thing that I wanted to point out with this is Mass Effect Andromeda's really bad marketing on launch. Basically centered everything around Alec Ryder and the N7s. Everybody got the wrong impression that we were going to play as an N7 and we're super mad when we weren't an N7. But what if moving forward, the way to do that and kind of to fix that is, yes, moving forward, you will be an N7. Um, could be this person. I don't know, but it could be a good avenue to have a bad N7 to kind of have to fix that as like a, either a main plot thread, side plot thread, whatever. And then eventually we'll be able to move past not being Shepard because we'll be an N7. And maybe this is my huge pipe dream as Shepard in the next game. They could be the ones to do that. And they could be the ones to kind of reform the N7 program so that whenever you kind of become a new N7, you'll always be thinking, Oh yeah, Shepard's the one that did this. Shepard's the it's Shepard's legacy. That's the theory. I just want to run that by you guys. Obviously, I can't put that in video format because it's just vibes. I don't really have a lot of solid points. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think, and I'm gonna scroll through and see where we're at here. Let me just scroll through the thingy here. <clears throat> and I need my coffee as well. And let me just let this run. Sorry, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea where I started. 
<laughs> okay, there we go. There we go. Oh, Dylan, thank you so much for the lurk. Appreciate it. Happy, I'm sorry. Spelling is hard and autocorrect is not always my friend. Please. It's all good. It is all good. I understand. It's all good. As long as you guys are happy and I guess <laughs> your username is literally happy, but as long as you guys are having a good time in the chat and getting your thoughts across, that is all good with me. Ch Chica. Yeah, I think it's Chica something. Paragon was the only channel to keep my hopes about Shepard returning, that's why I'm very excited to be a member of participate. Just wait, Blair. <laughs> Just wait. Oh, Jordan, is it, uh... Chiquita? Is that how you say it? I don't know. Gonna have to wait for some, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> the videos take a long time to edit. Oh, you mean to actually find out about the game? Yeah, no, it's going to take a long time. I assume, though, we're going to get a tease of if if Shepard's coming back, we will get a tease about that. That's that's not something they can hold back until game release. Like, even if we get it two years out from game release, we will get it beforehand because that is a huge marketing point that they they'll want to take advantage of. Shepard can be evil if you go full renegade. No, 100 percent. 100 percent. Um. I'm actually a huge fan of the full Renegade Shepherd arc um, because I think that it's a really good, it's a really good like redemption story if Shepard dies at the end. Because like imagine if you're like a full Renegade player, right? It's almost like, I kind of like to think of it, I, I, I put it akin to the Boromir arc, right? Also, Lord of the Rings spoilers. If you want to avoid Lord of the Rings spoilers, mute <laughs> and i'm gonna dive into it now but uh, uh for those who don't know like in lord of the rings uh boromir is one of the members of the fellowship um that is essentially tasked with getting rid of the one ring um and he kind of you know goes a little bit insane and kind of get influenced gets influenced by the ring um and tries to take it from frodo the protagonist but then he has a redemption moment you know, like, it's almost like he had a renegade moment, and then he was like, no, wait, what am I doing? I'm a part of this fellowship. I'm, I'm supposed to do good. I'm supposed to protect this person that I attacked, you know? Um, and I really liked Boromir's death there because it, it it represented his change. You know, like, he died honorably, and then his conversation with Aragorn, obviously, after is just heart-wrenching. Um, but that's why I like the idea of an evil, not even evil, just a renegade shepherd who dies at the end, because it's kind of like that arc, that character arc of just kind of, you know, uh, a Boromir. Love that. I absolutely love it. Music sounds renegade as well. Yeah, rene no, definitely. It's definitely renegade -y. Definitely. Is there any possibility that the benefactor is the person in the last Emmy video? I mean, that's my thought. <laughs> I have gone over this before. I think there is a chance that this is the benefactor. That, uh, this, where is it? I lost it. There is a chance that I think that this character might be the benefactor. Um, again, no real solid evidence, just kind of based on the books, uh, the Mass Effect books and stuff. It, it could be. I, I really do think the benefactor is either a synthetic gone bad or a human that is just out for power or something? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Blur has asked approximate release date for Mass Effect, for the next Mass Effect. I don't know. Uh, anything I say would be a guess. And if I had to guess, um, like AAA games take a long time to make, you know? They, they really, really do. And this game is still in pre-production. Um, the last game that Bioware would have made would be Dread Wolf which has taken, it would be nine years um, since they started development in 2018, if it, if it releases this year, you know? So um, I don't, I don't know. If I had to give an approximate, I would say probably whenever they announce production, five years after that. Um, but if they want a really high quality product, could be seven to eight years, you know? Like, I think everyone was talking about that one Grub uh, um, insider info on, like, could be 2029. It could be. 
that would be five years from now if they start production this year, because if Dreadwolf releases this year, right? So it's well within the possibility. It's just, you know. But I do want to say that might sound really far away, guys. There are a lot of other really, really good sci-fi games coming out, and I will be covering it on this channel. I think I mentioned it in my last video, like Exodus is one of them. It's going to be good. We're going to have games to play. We're going to have games we can compare to Mass Effect. And I feel like that's going to be something I mainly do and focus on on my channel, because obviously, like, this is first and foremost a Mass Effect channel. Whenever I look at any other sci-fi related thing, it's always going to have a Mass Effect spin to it. Um, so it may feel far away. There's going to be stuff for us to play, to talk about, compare, um, and it's going to be all right. Like, it's just, I, I, I know that it feels like, oh my goodness, it's five years away. We're going to have stuff to do. We're going to keep getting teases. We're going to get more and more each year. We're going to be okay. <laughs> this is also just me talking to myself because it does sound far away, but we're going to be all right. Um, Mr. D, what if the N7 in the video is a different one from the one in the poster? I have had this thought... <laughs> I have had this thought so many times as well, Mr. D. Uh, where is this here? Oh yeah, for some reason I don't think this is loading for me. Hang on one sec. Let's pop that off. I don't know why this isn't loading, but... Let me just add the image again. One second. I need to add the image again for some reason. Because it's not registering the one that I have here. Just need to get the, I want the full, actually no, I just want the, the top. Uh, yeah, and seven day hands top. Yeah, so, excusez-moi, and I popped, <laughs> popped it into my cam. I might like this. There we go, okay. Um, it could be Mr. D, <laughs> because if you look at this character, right? And I go back to the helmet. I know a lot of people are like, dude, it's the helmet's fine. It's 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 just camera and light stuff. It looks weird though, because here in this shot, also ugh, rip me guys. Okay, one sec. Had this all perfectly. Oh, and now I need a, whoop. Okay. So to me, there is a space. <laughs> In between, in between, right over. All right, now you figure this out. Right over here. Right there, there's a space. But then obviously on the render, there is no space, which I fully understand because a render is different from a picture. However, this is the original thing, you know? Like this is the original, they, they do the art before they do the render, usually. However, there's no space on this on this person's helmet, right? So, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, Ruben, it's a Dracula collar. 100%. I, that's what I think. New system that's built like it? Yeah. Could be framing the other new character or, or Shepard. Basically taking the blame for all this bad seven then crimes? Oh, that's interesting. Megamind, thank you. Yes, Megamind as well. You know, like all the bad guys in, in pop media, like they, like Arya and Thane, 100% more renegade -y. They have slightly high collars. This is a huge high collar, you know? Like, just think about villains. They, they have high collars. Maybe they want you to think that way. Could be, but usually like, I feel like they wouldn't, like in, in a character design, from what I've seen, anyway. The character design is inherent to who they are. You know? Like, they wouldn't want that, want us to think that, and then be like, oh, just kidding. They're actually good. Because it kind of gives off the wrong impression. Unless they can take off the coat and put on a different coat. Like, I don't know, but... It would be, it would be interesting. Arya's 100% anti-hero. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 100%. That's why I'm saying, like, take all this with a huge grain of salt. Because... I'm just, I, again, I think it's the bad guy because in my head, I have Shepard penciled in as the protagonist and stuff like that. Very light pencil. Very, very light pencil. Like, I am barely writing in Shepard there, but 
That's just that's just what I feel. They're saying rudimentary creatures. One of them could be shepping, uh, uh, sorry, framing Shepard or the new protagonist. Oh, you mean framing, like setting them up for a fall? But technically Shepard would be dead, right? So would be framing, uh, like I'm here for that because you wouldn't frame a dead person, right? You'd frame a, you'd frame a live person. So 100%, I'm on board with that because that means Shepard's alive. <laughs> Oh, excellent thought, uh, uh, Dorothy. Also, oh, I should be clicking these on. I should be clicking these on. Onto the chat. Um, but uh, Dorothy said, the vibe I get is not the hero we want, but the hero we need. I would love to play a story like that. I honestly would. Oh, I didn't get the alert. All good, Brandon. Welcome into the to the uh, Paragon Club. Did we did we come up with a... Guys, I, I think at the end of the last stream or the stream before that, I will take suggestions in the chat for what the heck... Our, like, what is our community called? I think I saw at one point, like, there's a play on Paragon. Something Paragon related. I will take suggestions for the community... <laughs> for the community, uh... Name. What, 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 what are we called? I don't know. I only have one and a half brain cells, so I need somebody else to... <laughs> if you look at Liara's color when she has an armor, it has a high color as well. Yeah, because a little bit renegade -y, right? What if they reflect the first Mass Effect game where we are the N7 and hunt a rogue N7? Yeah, no, th that's part of my thing, right? Like, like uh, Saren was a Spectre gone bad. This could be a new, uh, new N7 gone bad. And then we have to, yeah, hunt them. I'm here for that. Like, I I'm here for anything, to be honest. So let me just let this, let me let this play out. So there's something going on. That grave note, right when the N7 turns is a clear hint, it's... I'm not what you think, deception? Oh, you think it's more, uh... Yeah, I mean, I don't have the gamble tweet here. I wish I had it on cue, but I don't have it. Um... Even a group or helping Cerberus could be, could be. Also, can I click this? Can I click this? I think I'm, yeah, I'm a little bit behind here. Excellent question, Josh. Why would the N7 be evil even in the first place? If you read, again, Mass Effect's initiation, which I don't want to spoil, but human groups are doing weird things. That's all I'm going to say, because I don't want to go into specific spoilers, but the humans are very strange. That's it. <laughs> that's that's all. I think that would be like in the, the book description summary. The humans are being weird up to something. Which is why I'm like, the N7 program is inherently like it's a systems alliance program, you know? Like it's a human program. And the way that the books have been leading us, at least from the perspective of what's been happening in the Milky Way, that's why I'm leaning towards the N7 is bad. And something's going on with the systems alliance potentially. You know, it could be like a, like a Cerberus-esque thing going on where I don't know like some some somebody's doing something I don't know in my mind this is not confirmed at all but in my mind I feel like after the Reaper War Hackett retires because he's like I sacrificed the fifth fleet and I was the commander of this crazy <laughs> craziest war in history I'm done and then everything in the systems alliance goes to hell like that's that's just what I think could be anything though it could be just the good guys. We don't know. We do not know. So sorry, guys. I'm <laughs> oh no, I'm very far behind once again. Okay, I'm gonna start scrolling. If your theory is right, Shepard could open the N7s to other races. 100%. The N7s could turn into something beyond just human. You know, like, it could open the door to a lot of things. This idea kind of misses, not the usual dub. No, yeah, because because I, I I don't I can't back it up with evidence, which is why I wouldn't put it in video form. Um, it's 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 vibe, it's vibe. That's why I saved it for the for the vibey stream. Even if your theory proves wrong as a main narrative, could make an excellent side quest storyline. Just picking up receiving call from matter to brief me exactly. Yeah, like you, you could see it. Like the only reason I bring this up is because you could see it, but like. 
there's nothing to back it up in terms of like solid teases and stuff that we've seen so far. The elusive man said he was making an Eva and they would make sure she stayed under their control. Yes, but a, a couple people have thought that Eva is a continuing storyline that hasn't been resolved. However, Eva was the um, the the Laura Bailey uh, AI lady that we saw on Mars when we first meet Liara on Mars, who runs away um, after we talk to the elusive man. And then we're kind of, there's a this whole sequence where we're chasing her. That's Dr. Eva. Um, it's a little bit awkward the way that they put that conversation at the end during the Cerberus HQ mission. Um, but all it was meant to do was to to highlight like why Eva was created and the, the, the distinction between like Cerberus lost control of Edie. So they wanted to make an AI they could control. That's who Eva was. Um, so Eva is technically a, a dead plot thread. Like it's, it's a plot thread that's been wrapped and done. Um, it was interesting the placement of that, because I, I feel like that has confused a few people, but that, that one's done. Victor also saying, Shepard's story is done, time to move on. I've, I've seen this a few times. I've, I'm hoping that for all the, like every fan, that like, there's going to be something in the next game that will hopefully, like if you feel like Shepard's story is done, then you would have a chance to have closure with that and like not necessarily, you know, have to play as your shepherd and stuff like that. <laughs> Which, like, again, I'm just dancing around my own theory that's upcoming. Um, but I, I I do have thoughts on that. I do have a lot of thoughts on that. Um, which I think I'll make a video about it, to be honest, because there's a lot. I will go on another rant. Um, but I have seen a lot of people say that Shepard's story is done. And, and yeah, like, I, I, I get that. I 100% get that. It's just a, it's just a me thing. It's just a me thing. I want Shepard back. <laughs> I think your brain is fried. I'm sure you already said. But how does the N7 villain link to playable N7 protagonist? Yeah, sorry. So I don't know if <laughs> that theory made any sense in my head. But essentially like an evil N7, right? You would have to kind of track them down. And maybe like there are other evil N7s who you kind of have to like... Essentially, one of the plot threads would be to kind of fix the N7 program, which we can either do as Shepard or a new N7 protagonist. I don't know. Um, and you would kind of fix it so that whoever we are puts their own brand and mark on the N7 program. So I kind of brought up the Shepard talking to James and being like, you know, this is what it means to be an N7 and stuff like that, you know? Whoever we would be, as a new N7, would be able to put their brand on the N7 program such that in subsequent games, like whenever you have to move past them and you're like, okay, this N7 protagonist got two games, we feel like we're done. You don't have to then kill off whichever character <laughs> you have. Like you don't have to pull up Mass Effect 3 and have to kill off the character. You could just move on to a new N7 in the program and anyone that kind of either joins the game for the first time could be like, you know, hearing about a past N7 that was from a previous game and how they kind of impacted the story. So you can kind of feel that nostalgia. Um, you can kind of feel that that shepherd print on the program or whoever we are. Um, so you kind of have a path moving forward to continually have N7 protagonists. Um, I don't know if that made more sense, but there, there was a different game that I was using that as like a, a basis for, but yeah, anyway. If it ever becomes a, a theory that I want to make a video about, I'll probably, like, this is why I write up scripts. Because <laughs> otherwise, the, the that's how the theory comes out, and it's just the idea just kind of not fully formed yet. The last trailer Bioware does is when they will teach Shepard. Yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna draw it out. <laughs> if it'll even happen, they're gonna... They're gonna, well, it, it's interesting though. In order to stay relevant, because fans are already getting a little bit like these random teases that show us nothing aren't, you know, you know, like starting with the teaser trailer, like that one gave us a lot. Then the last one we got with just this new N7 didn't give us a lot. I'm not sure they could keep doing just 30 second teases and stuff like that. Like we're gonna need to get more and more. So who knows? 
And went all of Renegade once and still got the good destroy ending? Yeah, that's awesome. And Julia, my shepherd's story is not done. That depends on each person can I play. Exactly. Like that, that, that's my, like, I will always, always, always be an advocate for, like, every individual has their own canon. There is no one true canon. Like, I, I know a lot of people are like, yeah, there's canon that Shepard lives from Mass Effect 2 to 3. And I'll always go back to, like, you do need some things <laughs> to, you know, like, like having, having the hero in a planned trilogy survive, that kind of needs to be canon. Like, I don't know why people get mad about it. <laughs> I guess it's it's one of the weirder things. Um, but each individual choice, like who you romance, uh, which ending you chose, like all of those things to me are very personal and very specific, which is why with my theories, I try to keep that into account. You know, like I, I think it would personally be a bad call to canonize Destroy. Um, I fully understand why they do it, but I think it'd be a bad call. It sends the wrong message in a franchise that prides itself on being, like, heavily choice and consequence based to be like, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna canonize this thing. Like, how could you kind of trust them going forward to not canonize a thing that you don't want canonized? You know what I mean? Like, I just, I think it's, it's strange. It's an interesting conversation. Definitely. Why do you think they'll do this year at the N7 day, just like last year or something crazy? Awesome question. Um, I was convinced last year that they were going to reveal Shepard. <laughs> and then they revealed this... Uh, they revealed uh, this this old character. Um, again, it depends on when Dreadwolf releases. If Dreadwolf releases before N7 Day, we could get something absolutely crazy. Because they could be finally like, we're greenlit. You know, like we, we can finally announce production because that that kind of the, the the other series that Bioware works on will be wrapped. Um, not fully wrapped, just, you know, the, the latest game will be out there. Um, so we could see something crazy again, though, if Dreadwolf's going to release in December or, you know, early next year, we might get one more just small tease, you know, where we're going to have to parse through it and try to figure it out. Um, I have a feeling, though, that the Mass Effect team is getting desperate. Like, they want to share stuff with us, but they're just not. Because <laughs> they're not able to. Because um, anything, obviously, that they post will dwarf Dragon Age Dreadwolf. So they can't do anything yet. Um, so again, could go either way. I'm hoping, like, as soon as we get some Dreadwolf release date news, I am going to make so many videos <laughs> about just thoughts on what the Mass Effect how it's going to affect Mass Effect and, and stuff like that. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. The walk, the head nod says ready. It, I don't know if it says ready to me. Also, feel free to post your guys' things in the chat. We could do this now if you want. Um, Just what do you think the N7's saying when they nod? Are they saying one word? Are they saying... Are they saying I should go? I mean, they, they nod and then they turn... So I should go seems kind of legit. <laughs> Let me know. Let me know your guys' thoughts. I will pin the, the best comment at the top of the chat here. Release date 2029 to 2033. I don't think it'll be in the 30s. If it's in the 30s, I would just, I would cry. An official title reveal. I would just, if, if I could have one wish, it's a title reveal. <laughs> Because I am so sick of calling this thing the next Mass Effect, Mass Effect 5, the fifth Mass Effect, like whatever. Just give me a title so I know what to call it in my videos. Like, it just drives me insane. Drives me insane. Hasn't Mass Effect 5 been in pre-production for like seven years? Yeah, so it's a little bit complicated. It's complicated because... I think they had to pivot. Like, they obviously were going to do an Andromeda sequel, right? They obviously were going to do an Andromeda sequel. And then the reception to Andromeda happened, and they had to pivot. So they probably were going to start some type of a pre-production process on Andromeda 2. And then had to pivot. And keep in mind, while, like, there was a few things going on because they also had to release the Legendary Edition remaster of the trilogy in 2021. 
So in my mind, just thinking production wise, they were probably thinking like, okay, 2017 Andromeda drops. They knew 2021 Legendary Edition was going to drop. Um, so I was thinking maybe like 2026 or seven, maybe Andromeda 2 was going to drop, but then they had to pivot <laughs> and they probably had to come up with, they, they kind of had to accelerate what they were going to do in my mind. Again, not confirmed by anybody, which is why I think this is taking so long because they had to change their game plan. Um, and now we are seeing this trailer, right? Like this, these are the little bits and all the, the new N7 stuff, like we're seeing this stuff. Like, I think this was always part of their plan because it's way too refined. Um, and we just, we're, 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 we're slowly just getting little bits, but I do think that they have a plan. And I am curious how long it's going to take from the start of production to release, because obviously with production, like that's when the, that's when the nitty gritty, like the animators have to do their thing. And like the voice actors have to record and stuff like that. Like that's going to be very interesting to see how long that process takes. Cause if they have a huge, they have a blueprint, they have a game plan and they have it all figured out, could be fast. But again, it takes a long time to make a triple A game. Um, regardless of if you have everything figured out. So it's complicated. I think we just like the best thing in my opinion and the way that I treat this is we just need to let the Mass Effect team cook. Cause I really think they have something good planned and I just want to see what it is. I just want to see what it is and I think it'll be fun. Um, Luce, imagine they canonized the control ending and Shepard got corrupted over the hundreds of years between Mass Effect 3 and this game and is now the villain. Liara is basically the new Hackett and has to defeat him. I would be really upset if they did something like that. I'm going to be honest, like having Shepard be the villain to me would just feel, it would feel really bad. Like there's, there's no way that I could spin that in my head where I wouldn't feel like I was undoing everything that was built up in the trilogy. You know, like I just, I don't know. I don't know. I just... Control's definitely one of those ones where I'm like, ah, it's... I, it just I, it rubs me the wrong way. I think out of all the endings, Control definitely rubs me the wrong way because it's, it's an elusive man thing, you know? But I have seen plenty of fans explain, you know, why Control, you know, works for them and stuff. But for me, like, I don't really like any of the endings, but yeah, I, I choose Control the least amount of times. <laughs> <clears throat> game cycles are starting to hurt yeah no kidding no kidding i think it's very likely this n7 could be working for the benefactor as an enemy to the player but working towards the greater good sort of like the Kasari specter that worked for the shadow broker 100 percent blaze i yes i definitely if it's not the benefactor it's somebody it's somebody evil man that's my vibe your production is more like we're still waiting for the other team you can do a lot in pre-production though right you can create entire character arcs. Like there are concept artists that uh, Mike Gamble spoke about after like, uh, after the 2020, like after this release, <laughs> and this is a huge thing that's blowing up on Twitter right now, if you guys are following it. Um, but like, apparently it's new news that um, <laughs> there's trilogy veterans working on the game. They have been working on the game since 2020. Um, oh man, just watching this trailer makes me want to go edit the video for the trailer breakdown. Oh, anyway. Um, but yeah, like it's, there have been concept artists, like I'm pretty sure there was at least one concept artist that is a trilogy veteran that is a part of the pre-production team. So quite a bit of work can get, get can get done, like character arc stuff, what certain planets will look like. Um, you know, we already have a mud skipper. We already have like the SFX ship. We have a lot, you know, so quite a bit can get done. But again, the real hard work happens in production where, you know, they have to do the, um, the, the nitty gritty animations, voice lines and stuff like that. I hope Exodus has campaign co-op. That would be so much fun. So much fun. Samuel, really love the stream today. Thank you for the membership. Yes. Oh no, I said yes. Like, <laughs> said yes like how i say it to my doggo um yeah no uh samuel thank you so much for being here and uh look forward to the next video it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun 
Plus, like to Mass Effect 5 taking years to come out is that it gives me time to finish all my 100 hour RPGs. Join the club. Me going through Mass Effect Origins and I'm just can't get anywhere. <laughs> can't, can't get anywhere. Save me from myself. Absolutely. And Blur Music, have fun. I'll have to uh, go now. Thank you so much for being here, Blur Music. And for the for the um uh, uh for the for the gifted memberships really appreciate that okay uh playing the quarry at the minute not a bad game very uh choice heavy on the game pass oh nice nice like does a renegade for a while in mass effect 5 that would be interesting comes back with psychological problems what about a new trilogy around a corrupt n7 <laughs> i'll play it I'll play anything, okay? What if Shepard comes back as a force ghost? That would be funny, okay? I'm here for that. I'm here for that. Get a descendant of Shepard? Uh, I've gone over that. I don't I don't think so. Okay, I think I am slowly catching up to you guys here. Jane said Paragoons. I'm not really a fan of the Paragoons. Paracrazies. <laughs> Okay, that one's kind of funny. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, fair crazies. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to think on it. I'm gonna have to think on it. I do like a play on Paragon somehow. I just don't know. Spectre Squad for some. I, I do want, I do want Paragon to be in it somehow. I just, I'll have to think on it. Just be honest. We all know it's Conrad. Yep, yeah. in that armor here to save us all again. Yeah, no, guys, it's totally. I just, I. Conrad totally nods like that, okay? Look me in the eyes, chat, and tell me that this is not Conrad Werner. Look at that nod. I need to go find footage and make a, like, a meme video on <laughs> how it's Conrad. N7 could turn into another Spectre group? Yeah, like, it could, it could morph into something. I don't know. Could be Edie. I've gone over why it wouldn't be Edie, but, like, that's more just vibes. It could be Edie. Jedi Order? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 100%. Let me explain the theory in Zoomer terms. There's an N7 Among Us who's sus. Thank you so much, Luce. That's it. That's, that is the full explanation. <laughs> You'd have a way to input a world state based on your choices in the trilogy. They did that for a DA Inquisition. No, yeah, 100%. I think they will take into account the trilogy choices in, in the new game. Um, but yeah, I want to see how Inquisition did it. I do. What if Cerberus hadn't taken over the N7 and Shepard has to start? Yeah, like, it could be, right? N7s could be corrupt and you have to, like, take over stuff. I don't know. <laughs> also, welcome into Ruby Rose. Uh, hello, love your videos. Thank you so much. I, I, uh, I'm I, glad. Um, what if Ryder sent information to Liara somehow about the Benefactor and she's trying to find out their identity, identity and this N7 is stopping them? Totally. Like... I'm trying to think of evidence that could back that up. I mean, I know that it's it's a little complicated in terms of like communication wise, because we don't know if Andromeda can communicate to the Milky Way. And if it's in real time, like we just don't know. I uh, have just an ongoing theory that I can't really back up with anything, that the benefactor is still in the Milky Way, um, just based on vibe, just vibes. <laughs> No, no evidence, just vibes. Um, so 100%, it could be like a writer telling Liara something and then the benefactor is in the Milky Way. So then she has to do something akin to like, okay, I'm going to work on this problem over here while you're over there. Like, yeah, totally, totally. The Alliance as a whole has been corrupted. How and to what extent is the question? Mass Effect initiation, guys. Read the book. Read the book. I thought the full reveal of Dreadwolf was in the summer, so they are safe for Emmy. The full reveal of the uh, Dreadwolf trailer, uh, Jerome, will be in summer. Um, but they haven't actually announced the release date. Like, I think in summer we'll get a release date, which I'm hoping, like, I think it could be fun if they do, like, a Dragon Age Day release date. I don't know if that would be possible, but I think it could be. It could be fun. It could be fun. This is my favorite jacket on the Citadel. Ayo. It has all the endings to all choices of take up two. <laughs> oh no, one. For anyone who has no idea about game development, it would be nearly impossible to make a game that has all endings, all choices. It would take up too much time and resources and end up with a crap game. I am so curious about your thoughts on me solving 
solving the uh, Mass Effect 3 endings. I try. I try. Again, it's... <laughs> it's an interesting shot at it, but I, I, I do try. Oh, welcome in, Kella. I didn't see that you, you were in here. I don't know why I thought this was a video. Oh, <laughs> not a live stream. Um... I think I, I think I announced that it was a live stream in the in the community post, but welcome in. Let me know if you have any uh, any questions. Don't think they were going to make Andromeda 2 based on some stuff Walter said a while ago. I think DLC. Oh, really? Real? I was convinced that a sequel would make sense because they left way too many cliffhangers. So I guess that was just vibes. Okay, we're taking in some N7 thoughts on what this new N7 is saying. I'll be back. Yes, that's a good one. I think they're saying we'll bang okay. It could easily. No, Isra, totally. Yeah, we'll bang okay, and then pulls out a gun. Different, different type of banging. Just <laughs> pulls out gun and sh shoots the person. Oh man, <laughs> I love it. Uh, oh yeah, Kella. Oh, you missed my doggo. I showed my new doggo, but I think he's asleep now. He's asleep. N7 says, Grant, you coming? Mila? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, I am... I feel like I'm the only person in the fandom that doesn't see the Krogan in the back. Like, I... So for those who, who have no idea what... That's uh, where the Krogan is, because you can't actually see it. So, right above my head here, right? Right, right above. Apparently there's a Krogan. <laughs> I can't see it. Like, I've, I've tried playing the video, and I just can't, I can't. Why would there be a Krogan there? I just, I, I don't understand, I don't understand why there would be a Krogan there. Like, yes, I can, I can understand it's, it's kind of Krogan shaped, but. I don't know. It's just it's it's a it's a me thing. I think it's just me. If everybody else is seeing the Krogan, I think it's just one of those like, you know, the thing is hidden in the <laughs> background somehow and I just I can't see it. But um like I honestly think like this is just my no evidence again, but I think that the N7 character nodding is is literally just for the vibes. Like they're just nodding to the camera for the vibes not at someone, they just did it for the teaser. I'd love to hear an actual, like the developer breakdown. Again, I need the Mike Gamble tell all, like I just, I need it. <laughs> I will never click on a video faster than the Mike Gamble tell all. I just, I can't, I can't. Animals the company has previous MEU, night pieces to have more proactive animal companions. Yes, 100%. <sighs> Mila one can hope. I'd, Love it if Grunt is in the next. Definitely. So they'll be making three different games for one game. Then choices you cannot make everybody happy. No, you can't make everybody happy. But I try. <laughs> I, I tried my darndest in solving the endings. I tried. It's it's hard. I will say it was the hardest, most soul-sucking thing I've done trying to solve the Mass Effect 3 endings. And that's why I'm like, if the devs want to canonize something, I would understand. Because that was soul-sucking. It really was. After all, Lee Edie could live forever, don't you think? That's why I think it's uh, her in the uniform. It would be interesting to have... I'd love it if there was, like, synthetic N7s. That would that would throw a new twist into, like, what are the N7s, really? Right? Like, are N7s only humans? Or can they be synthetics? Can aliens join the N7 program, you know? Which is why I'm a fan of it morphing into something new. Because so many of the merch and everything... Like, the fandom, the fandom, we all are kind of drawn towards being an N7. But we also want to be able to do things, like a few fans want to play as, like, not just humans and stuff. So I think it'd be cool to morph it into something new. I think it'd be cool. Derek Watts, the original uh, original trilogy art director, returned to Bioware to be the art director. Thank you so much, Kala. Yes, so it's, it's uh, Derek Watts, who I believe is on the pre-production team and on that team like he's gonna be doing things like making making those concept arts and making just like character sketches and all all the things that an art director does that i don't know but i assume it's something awesome and creative and fun <clears throat> oh 
Oh, that's interesting, Legendary. Amy um, Henning has joined EA and will be assisting the RPG department, so she brings tons of knowledge. I'm excited. I'm so excited, guys. Like, also, just from, like, a... I, I just... I, I really, really love all of the hirings that they have been doing because it just makes sense. Like, they hire somebody new and you're just, like... Wow, I can't believe Bioware and EA now has this person with all of this experience that they can fall back on, you know? Like, like, I just really want Dreadwolf to be a success, because I'm so curious what this game could be. I just, I, I really want to play it. I just really want to play it. What if they pull, uh, Haven saying, what if they pull a Luke Skywalker on Shepard? See, this is what I don't want to happen. I don't want it to turn into this ongoing, just kind of like you know, gotta bring back the old people because they, they've got to carry the franchise. Like, I don't like that aspect of Star Wars. Um, I think that in, like, um, The Force Awakens, I thought that it was a good amount of, like, nostalgia with new, and then it kind of morphed into a little bit too much of, like, a... Like, I think they wanted to have a... Like, here's the thing, right? This kind of is why I'm saying they need to bring Shepard back so they can give Shepard closure. Because otherwise fans will always be like, but what about Shepard? But what about Shepard? But what about Liara? What about Garrus? Like, what happened with Tally? Um, they need to give closure to that so that they can move past it. Because otherwise, like with Star Wars, they tried to give, like, they, they waited 20 years to give closure. And look at what happened, right? It was just, you, you need to just give closure quickly so that fans can move on, so we can get behind a new protagonist. Otherwise, we'll end up with just 20 years down the line, Mass Effect will be like, man, the only good thing was that original trilogy, and I don't want that to happen. Which is why it's important to get closure and to have something like, you know, a success plan for, okay, who are our protagonists gonna be moving forward? And sevens make the most sense, it's all over the merch and stuff like that, so how can we make that happen? And that's why I'm kind of like, could be fun to have an evil in seven because then you could kind of fix the program and then have all of your past characters that you've been like it's kind of like you know what originally i think might have given me the theory is dragon age origins because you're i assume like you're you're a gray warden right in every game again i don't know but you are a gray warden and i'm sure that you hear about the past gray wardens before you um, Mass Effect could do the same thing. You hear about the N7s before you, so you feel like there's still that aspect of nostalgia that you can move forward. Um, which is why I think it just it makes so much sense, you know? It just, it makes sense. <clears throat> Paragon says yes, Sham is like, I'm a good boy. No, yeah, I said yes exactly like how I say it, Sham. So funny. Emily Wong to make a return? She was killed off in the strike. Wait, was Emily Wong killed off? Was she actually killed off? I didn't know. Paragang? I kind of like Paragang, Craig. Paragoons? All right, get, get, guys, give me two more examples of what, uh, like a para, Paragon community names, and I will put it in a poll, and we will decide here and now. <laughs> Unless I change my mind later. I like, I'll put Paragoons and I'll put Paragang. Duck Lake saying it's not Conrad. You never know though. <laughs> Victor, I always send Conrad to get killed in Mass Effect 1. No! Yeah, source guys, just trust me, bro. No evidence, just vibes. Yeah, hashtag no evidence, just vibes, guys. <laughs> oh my goodness. Have you heard the theory that Korra is the elusive man's daughter? I have. And y'all, I am here for that one. I am so here for that one. I want to cover it on the channel. So I'm going to save my thoughts on that one. But yes, I have. Emily Wong should have been on the Normandy. Yeah, like I understand all the stuff around why Diana Allers was on the Normandy. But like, guys... Emily Wong, like her character from one to two, and like you're hearing her like on the Citadel, like announcing stuff, and you're like, yep, I gave her inside info like two years ago before I died. And then and, and look at her, she's like blossoming into an awesome reporter. I had no idea she died, guys. Is this canon? Like every playthrough, she's dead? That'd be shocked. 
The one thing I've seen from Bioware is a lot of the teasers they give are usually scenes from the introductions of their games and the full trailers usually show the middle of the game. Oh, is that a thing? They are finding the helmet in the N7 trailer could be the very beginning of the game. I'd agree with that. Blaze, I feel like I, I usually I usually agree with a lot of uh, a lot of your theories there, so keep them coming. Definitely. Like that one? Solid. Definitely agree. The Krogan, right? I don't see I don't see it. I see I see a crate. I'm not seeing a Krogan. I I assumed it was just me, because everyone was like, it's a Krogan. And I just I can't see it. You have to play it slow-mo and find the right spot to pause. You know what, I missed it. I don't have slow-mo in my OBS, so I don't know. I see a Krogan there, but I don't see the hype in that. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I mean, it could be any Krogan, right? I just, I, I find it funny how hyped, we're so desperate. We're getting hyped about a Krogan that may or may not be there. Like how, how desperate, how desperate. I think it's funny. It's, it's good. It's a good funny, you know, like we're all just laughing together because we're just cr like we're cry laughing because we just need more Mass Effect. Light on the armor. Uh, yeah. So Brandon, I don't know if you're talking about the light on the helmet here. So my um, my professional uh, art uh, bud slash sister. <laughs> Fang, please put that in your bio. Professional uh, art bud slash sister has told me, Fang, in the chat. That this light on top of the helmet by the N7 here, just right on top of the head there, is the light from like the the like you need to have a camera light when you're rendering things. Like you you physically put like a light source in the render scene, um, for 3D renders, and that's probably that light. So I'm not sure that could be like a hint of some sort, or whether they just needed that there to um, be able to shine light on the N7, um, if that makes any sense. Let me know if, if that was the light you were talking about, though, Renan. Uh, Kala is saying that they are uh, the N7 is nodding at the Krogan, telling them to come with them. If the Krogan is really there, I think they are. Yeah, Kala's convinced there's a Krogan there, guys. I don't see it. I, I'm not seeing the Krogan, but... I think it's funny. Guys, okay. Random thought. <laughs> what if the next game is just completely different from any of the other games? And it's just you're playing as an N7... Just renegade -y, like, agent, like like Kala has uh, suggested in her in one of her videos. And the only companion you have is a random Krogan. <laughs> like, again, I will play it. I will play whatever. But imagine that's it. And you just have to go around saving the galaxy. It, like, it's one of those things you hear about. Like, it could be like a Mass Effect TV show within the games. You know, like, like Blasto, but it's just a random N7. And Krogan. I really hope if the Mass Effect team, if if there if there wasn't a Krogan in this at all, I hope they put a nod and an Easter egg towards us thinking it was a Krogan, and they randomly have a TV show where it's just it's an N7 and a Krogan, and they're just you know like kicking butt and and taking names. That would be so funny. But I'm not seeing the Krogan. <laughs> Krogan could be anywhere though, so what difference would it make? That's why I'm like, there's no Krogan, because that it, that info tells us nothing. Is at the start? No, 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 Jerome. I know where the Krogan's supposed to be. I'm just not seeing it. Like people have pointed it out to me, and like I just I don't I. Why would it matter that an N7's nodding to a Krogan? <laughs> you know what I mean? It just seems like such a random thing to include in a teaser. Which is why I hope there is a Krogan, because it makes no sense. I love it. I just, I love the thought. And Jordan, gotta go. Uh, love your vids. Uh, have a great evening. Thank you so much, Jordan, for joining chat for the first time, and I appreciate it. Unless you tell that Kiring Genophage is canon? You could have a singular Krogan, though, just chilling, right? Like one Krogan that's just hating on everybody because we didn't cure the Genophage, right? We've seen a Krogan in every teaser. Have we? All right, there hasn't been a Krogan. Okay, let's let's go through. Let's go through and examine. There hasn't been a. Oh no! Wait, Kel, I think you might be right. Wait, why isn't my thing going forward? Oh, I'm on the wrong thing. Here we go. So Cal is saying that in the back over here, there's a Krogan. Ah, can't move my. There we go. Okay, so 
Come on. So to the left of my cam right now, that there's a Krogan in the background. And then in the... Oh, shoot. I, for some reason, the Geth poster isn't rocking up. The Geth poster is refusing. But in the in the Geth poster, there is definitely a Krogan. You guys know what I'm talking about, even though I can't bring it up, which sucks. Um, but in this one, there's no Krogan, right? Unless there's a hidden Krogan. Guys, wrong answers only. Where is the hidden Krogan on the SA intercept? <laughs> I just... I. No, 100%. They're, they're going to be important. Here's the thing. They're only teasing Asari and Krogan. And we all know why. Because we don't know. Those are the two races that you can tease without us knowing what the heck the timeline is. It's just, it's genius. They're, they're so smart. And I hate that they're so smart. I don't like franchises being carried by one character. It only leads to, like, you just, you can't move the franchise forward. Geth and Krogan's the next game title will be M-E-G-E-K-O. <laughs> Yeah, guys, next next game title, you heard it here first, will be Emmy Gecko. You heard it here first. It's not going to be meme. It's going to be Gecko. Star Wars already had closure. Here's, here's my thought on that, right? And again, this is one of those, like, theories that... More vibes. No evidence, just vibes theory, guys. Um... At the end of the Legendary Edition, at the end of Mass Effect 3 as well, the originals that came out in 2012, we got the extended cut, right? So, um, for those who don't know, like, when the game originally ended, you just see, like, the Normandy kind of crash landing on the new planet, and then that's it. You see Joker walk out, and you see, like, either Edie or your love interest or somebody walk out. They look at each other and then it just kind of ends and then the credits roll. That that was the original endings. And then they included the extended endings where either Edie, Hackett, or Shepard themselves are narrating while showing kind of just snippets of like art and stuff like that. Of uh, wrapping up like character arcs, like, you know, showing Miranda, showing um, uh, Jack with her students and stuff like that. Um, here's my thought on that, right? It's very specifically extended cuts very specifically left out the most popular characters you don't see an end cutscene for garris you don't see one for liara you don't see one for tally you don't see one for caden slash ashley i'm pretty sure you don't see one you don't see one for javik you don't see one for james you technically don't see one for like ed slash joker i feel like that was very specific because they had planned to do something with this crew one more time. Because I think they realized that they, they might have, you know, they might have screwed up. Um, and I just find that very interesting. If they were never going to come back to the Milky Way, they would have included extended cuts for those characters. But instead, the vague extended cuts that you see are just kind of like, you know, Zaid chilling on a... On a thing, you know? And obviously they were working on Citadel DLC and stuff like that, but like... I find it very interesting that they didn't include the most popular characters and a kind of a wrap-up, an end for them. And then, the last thing you see is the... Tell me another story about the Shepherd. It's getting late, but okay, one more story. They included that in the extended cuts. That's a very, very interesting thing to include. Like, I just... That's why I'm on the very much, like, thinking train. <laughs> the very much thinking train. Um, that we are going to get a resolution and we are going to get closure for those characters in the next game. Because they, they didn't give us any sort of closure there. And they can't pull a Star Wars. You know? Like, they can't pull a... The last thing you see is that campfire where they're all celebrating. Because that's where... That's what they kind of have did, done with the Mass Effect 3 endings. Just the, yay, we won. But like, where's the closure, right? And I feel like it would be very weird to have like a 600, like a 600 year time jump closure because it'll feel like we missed out. And like, we don't really get that. Like, like time jumps are, are very intricate things that you have to, you have to maneuver those very carefully. So 
I'm more like I would personally appreciate a timeline closer to after the Reaper War so we can understand where the Milky Way's at and all that stuff. But that's another no evidence, just vibes thing on. I do think we're going to get closure because they didn't give us closure intentionally with the extended cuts and all of that stuff. So hydrate and food check. I have been drinking my coffee and I think I'm okay. <laughs> Fang, but I appreciate it. Imagine if it gets the worst review bombing ever. I would just... Next DA, the best review even before playing it. I just hope Dreadwolf's good. Like, legit. I, I hope that... I hope it's it's solid. Oh, shoot. I keep losing my place. Really, I'm really excited for this uh, N7. Yep, 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 yep. I can't believe Wong is dead, guys. Like, I had no idea, and I'm devastated. Emily Wong was killed through Twitter as promo for Mass Effect 3. Are you kidding me? Dude, if I was a part of this franchise, like, as a fan, <laughs> back when it was coming out, I would be an emotional wreck. Like, I would just, I, I wouldn't have survived. I wouldn't have survived. One breath does not mean survival. Can't be the last breath. Would be. <laughs> if you breathe, you live. <laughs> I love it. Professional art butt slash sister. Yeah, but <laughs> Oh, man. Also, I feel like we've been listening to this, uh, this soundtrack for a very long time. Let me switch it up. Let's go Mass Effect 1 from the top. Still taking uh, music reference, uh, music requests, by the way, if you guys have uh, thoughts on that. <clears throat> the Krogan silhouette has a light on its chest with some Krogan armors. Yeah, no, they're like, people have had solid evidence, guys, that uh, that they see the Krogan and it's there. I I just, yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen it. And I just, it doesn't make sense for me that, yeah, I know. I see, I see the light you're, you're talking about. It's just, why? <laughs> If I could ask the devs one question, no joke, like absolutely no joke, it wouldn't be, is Shepard coming back? It would be, is that a Krogan back there? Because I feel like that's what keeps me up at night more than the Shepard thing. <laughs> I just I love it. Why would they put a Krogan there? It just, I think the one thing that doesn't make sense to me, right, is if we look at that light, let me just move my camera so we all, we're all on the same page here. So if, so this, this little light right above my camera here, if we look at it, oh dear, sorry gang, um, if we look at the light, it doesn't like, like, it moves with the camera. Also, <laughs> that was a great job, Atharia. <laughs> I blocked the light completely with my camera. Um, if we look at it, this time without me blocking it. It seems to move with the camera like a lot. And I feel like if it was a stationary thing, like on a person that it wouldn't move like that. Like, I don't know, again, no evidence, just vibes. I feel like it's not a part of like somebody's armor. Like it's a thing that's farther back from where the Krogan shaped thing is. I don't know. <laughs> again, I just, it's hard for me to see the Krogan. I am not, uh, I can't see it. I can't see it. Can't see it. Looks out of place compared to the rest of the surroundings. First thought, I think the Mass Effect will be more cyberpunk. Blade Runner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I'd play it. I'd play it. What if this N7 is just a Salarian dressed up? <laughs> I mean, I've gone over I've gone over every alien that it could possibly be. Unless Salarians have suddenly grown five fingers or grown two extra fingers, because they, they usually have three, I believe. Then it could be, but that's a very human looking hand. Just move my cam again. Salarian hands don't look like that. But, uh, yeah. And I mean, oh, are you saying that because of the, the head thing? <laughs> the head thing that, where I'm like, it's a very squished and thin head. I just don't think it's Salarian. It's like a mercenary in Star Wars. Oh, the new N7. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Yeah, Juan. So about the last breath thing, I think what it is, I feel like what it is with the last breath is because it's everything that came before that. So, oh, I don't have it here. Here, let me try to get it for you guys. Let me try to get it for you guys. So the perfect destroy last breath thing that we see, right? Come on. Um, it's because your love interest looks up hopefully at the end. Um, where the heck has my thing gone? Oh, I mean, I'm in screenshots. Um, your love interest kind of looks up hopefully at the end. So would they show a final breath with that? I think not personally. I think it would be more like a, like it's a hopeful, it's a hopeful lead in. Where is it? Perfect destroy, perfect destroy. Here we go. Okay, so. Rip. Yeah, we're not watching that. So here, right? Oh, no, wait. <laughs> this is the wrong video. Sorry. One second. Oh, I know where I put it. I know where I put it. I put it here. There we go. So here. It is when... It's this lead up, right? So, like... <laughs> I love how the game over music's playing as well. It's not game over music, it's Sarah music. But your love interest doesn't actually put the name, like, Shepard's name on the memorial, right? They look up, hopefully, as if it's like a, you know... Like, first of all, not putting their name on the memorial is very, like, a... There's still hope. It's, it's like a hopeful thing, right? And look at this, like, she looks up hopefully and is kind of like, there's there's still hope here. And then I can't quite move it ahead. I'm, ah, I'm going to try. Ah, right here. When you actually listen to, like, the lead up here, let, let's listen to it. Pause the music. It's very hopeful. There we go. Oh, sorry. Uh, advanced audio. You guys could probably hear it, but I can't. Output. There we go. This is the lead up, right? Very hopeful. And then... Like, it rises. The music rises. And the breath happens, you know? So... Like, when the... When your love interest is kind of looking up, the music's very hopeful. And the lead up, like, it's not like a, you know, a... Yeah, this is their final breath, because the... I wish I could do, like, a music theory <laughs> thing, because it is just very vibesy, but... It's very hopeful before the final breath. You know what I mean? It's very specific. Everybody definitely could have different opinions on that, because, again, music is down to interpretation. But I view it as a very hopeful... Hopeful breath. Could be the last breath, though. I don't know. It's just my take on it. Uh, okay. We could all be called, uh, Normandies. Okay, Luna. Is there any play, though, on Paragon? Because I, I like the idea. <laughs> Normandy's nuts. No, no, no. We're, we're not going there. Plot twist, we play as the Krogan. Oh, yeah, Israel. Plot twist, guys. I would just... I I'd love it. <laughs> That's hilarious. You played as a Krogan as a multi. No, 100%. Krogan on the first poster. Yep, the Geth one. The Krogan was thrown out the airlock. Krogan on the mastery. <laughs> I just... I'd love to know where the Krogan is here. The Krogan, guys, is in this ship that's by my... That's, that's going into where the relay. There's a Krogan on board that ship. No evidence, just vibes. There's a Krogan on board because there has to be a Krogan. All right? There, there just has to be. <laughs> In the end of ours, you see Shepard take a breath and we say yes. No, 100%. Should be the Vol. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be a Volus, guys. <clears throat> no, I'm devastated. Yeah. Fell into the trap seeing a breath, thought life. Not always the case having been around death. There's such a thing. No, 100%. It's down to interpretation. It is down to interpretation. For me, all of those lead-up things makes... Like, 
it makes me believe that it's it's the breath of life, I guess, or not the breath of life, but you know, a sign that they're alive, but down to interpretation. Such a large time jump just ruins the game. Tech would advance so much that it wouldn't even resemble. Yeah, like, here's the thing, right? So, something that I wanted to bring up is... Pop this back on. Because for some reason, my images aren't loading. So this image, right? Why is this so large? One moment. It's, it's just me. Me and my life just minimizing and slowly making files smaller so we can all see what's up. So this city that we have been teased, right? Oh dear. <laughs> I'm done. This that we've been teased. This does not look futuristic. Okay? Like, this looks very familiar. I think in multiple videos by multiple Mass Effect creators, we're all saying, like, this is probably Ilium or, like, a, an Asari planet, because, I mean, you know, there is an Asari just chilling out in the bottom left corner right by my cam over here. Um, but nothing in here looks futuristic. And if you look at this car, like, this car, this identical car, is in Mass Effect 3. Now, if we're in a 600-year time jump, I sincerely doubt that the cars would still look like this, right? Like, even nowadays, five years past, the cars start looking really futuristic and just more, you know, modern, more sleek. This car, you can find it in Mass Effect 3. We have seen nothing so far that's kind of been, you know, or, or shuttle or whatever the heck this is. Like, there, there would be a definite change in the look of these types of vehicles because 600 years is a long time. Derek Watts is the art director. He'd come up with something awesome. He'd come up with something modern and futuristic, which is why I think there's not going to be a large time jump because... We've gotten no indication from anything so far, the concept art-wise and stuff like that, that indicates that we're, we're having a huge time jump. Some people have said the new N7 kind of looks very, like, sleek and modern in the helmet and stuff like that, 100%. But then the other teases they've given us have kind of contradicted that. So, like, who knows? Could be set in two different times? I don't know. Um, but I do think at least part of the game will involve... The previous timeline. Craig has got it, guys. Shep is the Krogan. Yeah, that's the, the real plot twist, guys. Yeah, we'll be playing as Shepard. Shepard the Krogan. Because, <laughs> like, headcanon, right? Like, Shepard, if you cured the Genophage, would be, like, just almost, like, one of those huge, like, martyrs for... Or not, like, a martyr, but, like, you know, like, just almost, like, one of those people that you look up to and stuff. <laughs> Because, you know, help save the race. And uh, there could be a whole bunch of little Krogans around called Shepard. Just, you know, like Rex would totally name one of his kids Shepard. Totally. Because, I mean, he would have like a thousand or something, right? So at least one, you would name one kid after your friend, right? <laughs> Shepard is a bi uh, biotic because they brought him back to life and gave him healing abilities. Oh, you're going with that, Michelle. This... Yeah, Shepard is part synthetic, so you never know. It's an AI Shepard. <laughs> I love this. Okay, wait. I need to read out this. Can I click on it? Oh, I can't click on it. Sorry, guys. I haven't. I haven't clicked. Oh wait, no, I can. I can. I can again. Okay, this this comment right here. Why isn't it popping up? It's not popping up. Where's the overlay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Come on, pop up. It's such a good line. It's not popping up. Oh, it could be because... Okay, one sec. Oh, no, wait. Sorry. It is there. <laughs> it is there. I'm just uh, bad at OBS. There we go. Had to move the, the thing. Brandon's saying... So <laughs> Brandon's saying the... Um, this is an AI shepherd. This right here is AI shepherd. Rebuild faster, stronger... And more Shepherder. I love that that's... We're, we're, we're gonna make Shepherd a verb now. Shepherder. The new protagonist better be more Shepherder than the old Shepherd. Alright? You can read about uh, Emily Wong's last moments in the Mass Effect wiki. Oh, I just... That breaks me, man. It really does. 
We know from Mac Walter's notes that Shepard's alive. Yeah, well, Shepard's alive and dead. Schrodinger's cat. Schrodinger's cat. Yep, lots of speculation from everyone. I love that page, by the way. I don't know if I can show you guys. For anyone that doesn't know, let me get that. Let's pause this for one second. <clears throat> and like, clearly, Walters had to have done that after, after everything. Because the Shepherd Breath wasn't a part of the original games, right? Because that was, or, or the original uh, three. Because um, the Breath was part of the extended cut. So in every ending, I believe it was assumed that uh, Shepherd died. So the fact that there is an interesting page that says uh, Shepherd's alive. Get this. Yeah, here it is. Um, the fact that there's this interesting page, for those who don't know. So this was a Mac Walter. So from the final hours of Mass Effect 3 by Jeff uh, Cayley, um, uh, Jeff basically got some insider like notes and stuff like that on the endings. And right at the top there, it says Shepard alive and sense of hope, uh, finale, brave new world, symbolic. Uh, symbolic probably meaning like the shepherd and stuff like that with that kind of biblical reference um and then it kind of goes into the different endings right bomb sacrifice self uh, i think that says reaper take control that's control ending and then hybrid blast goes out and then it kind of goes into a few things um destroy life creates life on the left hand side here choice catalyst shepherd's essence that's probably hybrid but then, so we see Shepherds alive at the top, right? This had to have been written after the fact because Shepherd was not seen alive until the extended cuts. Um, and then scrolling down, you can see right in the kind of middle-ish there to the left after like it says end of first matrix, under that it says Shepherd's death. And you can see the line, boy, but why did he have to die? Um, and then lots of speculation from everyone is written at the bottom there. So this is Walter's actual notes, probably on what he wanted to do for the extended cuts. Um, and yeah, in the notes, it says Shepard's death and Shepard's alive. So nothing is canon. That's why a lot of my theories are, guys, it's whatever you want it to be, because that is the that was the intention. Like, it's whatever you want it to be, which is why I'm so curious how they're going to do this in the next game because you need to have some sort of linearity right so who knows it's not moving and then start moving again it's not like a final breath we don't technically see the next breath so you never know you never know Krogan is right between the noodle bar and the bathroom uh in the OG Star Trek, the shuttles are just like that. Oh, that's awesome. Fashion has had advancements, but not the cars. Insert notes, emotes. Exactly. <laughs> Hashtag team cure genophage. Make sure that Ploppy, aka Tim, is not in the chat when you say that. <laughs> Tim is... <laughs> Tim is hashtag shoot warden in the back, which like, it's, it makes me sad. Shepard means hero in Krogan. I mean, I don't know if that's legit, but if technology saying it's the same 600 years later, yeah, exactly. It just wouldn't make sense. Jerome, I don't know what you meant there, but I'm seeing it could also be a PB of resources and all I'm inputting in my head is peanut butter or personal best. And neither of those are making sense. <laughs> Plethora, maybe? I don't know. Let me know. I assume you didn't mean peanut butter. <laughs> Although, you never know. This universe can also trade technology and materials to build new stuffs. Yeah. Schrodinger Shepherd Man. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. That that's I am here for Schrodinger Shepherd. I mean, look at the look at the background that I got uh, Fang to make for me. Both Shepherds existing at the same time. I just I remember seeing in the um in the the Andromeda, in Andromeda, just seeing two writers existing, you know, twinning, 
And I just remember thinking the whole time, I was like, oh, if that could be M. Shep and Bro Shep, I would just, uh, that'd be a lot of fun. Um, oh, this is interesting. This is an interesting quote. Oh no, my, my, my camera's in the way. Um, also guys, feel free to pop your own theories on this N7 into the chat. The one last thing I also wanted to get to, which we'll get to, maybe I'll take a few of your guys' theories. I wanted to get into your thoughts on what the new teasers, um, the things before the new teaser, what that could mean. So let me just quickly show you guys the, I want to go into what you guys think the Epsilon Oculon Nebula stuff is. Because you guys helped me out so much with the Mass Effect teaser trailer and I had so many brain blasts that I wanted to get your guys' thoughts. We can kind of use more than just my one and a half brain cells to figure this out. Uh, I think I popped it in here. So let me just open this up as well. I want to get your guys' thoughts on what this could have meant. Because I've already kind of gone through it, so I won't uh, I won't bias you guys yet, unless you guys have watched the videos. Uh, but I first want to... Here, let me just move my cam. This is what's upcoming. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about this. Hang on. Just, there we go. Uh, okay, so Galaxy Wolf saying, what if, uh, what if his friends pretend Shepard died? He actually survived, went into hiding. They could, they could retcon that. They could, they, they could easily retcon that. I feel like it would be a bit of a letdown though. And of course it would only apply to Perfect Destroy, right? So again, um, in most of my theories, I try to take into account like all of the, all of the versions of Shepard that, that could have existed, the, the dead versions and the alive ones. Um, but in Perfect Destroy, like, my personal thoughts on Perfect Destroy is that, like, it's probably like a breath, like, Shepard takes a breath, and then it's not like, you know, Shepard could pick themselves out of the rubble <laughs> or something, you know? Um, I feel like they, they need to be rescued. <laughs> um, and then either is put in, like, a cryo sleep or something of that nature, because... I'm not sure they could walk away from that. You know what I mean? So, uh... Yeah, like, I'm not sure... I'm not sure they could kind of go into hiding. But that's just my th personal thoughts on it. Again, hashtag no evidence, just vibes. Um... Oh, Jerome, a problem! It could also be a problem of resources, right, for, for rebuilding the galaxy. No, yeah. Like, we don't know the state of the galaxy, right? I mean, I will say the one other thing I wanted to bring up, let me just, uh, before we jump into that, is the one thing we saw, where is it, the code art here, let me just hide this. So on the code art, right, like, you just see people, they look like they're having, like, the best time on this place. Oh no, I'm gonna have to do the thing. Pardon me while I... Once again, minimize. There we go. Um, the people in this place, which I think it seems very Citadel-like because there are humans galore. Um, and I don't think Andromeda would have Oh, well, there it is. There, there's the other thing. It's off to the off to the side. Um there's there's a lot of humans just chilling in this place. So I personally think it's the Citadel because I'm pretty sure it is canon that the beam still exists between Earth and the Citadel. Um, so I think that this, this could be the Citadel. And I mean, like, they're all just kind of chilling, right? Like, it doesn't look like, generally, like, even if there's scarce resources, there there's always going to be a party somewhere, right? But it is a little interesting insight into kind of, I guess maybe where the where the Citadel and then the nightclub in, a, in the Citadel would be. Um, or I've seen some people say that this like people are dressed up a little bit more, a little bit more like this is like a like a um, like some type of a, I'm blanking on the word right now, but more of like a professional like event of some kind um, rather than a nightclub. Um. So, yeah, it could be like just like a party. A professional party. <laughs> it's interesting, though. Very interesting. Uh, 
PB from Andromeda. Yeah, yeah, P <laughs> PB. No, yeah, what is wrong with me? Why did my thoughts not just go to PB? I need to play more Andromeda, clearly. Uh, and oh, this is interesting. So Dorothy's saying, I read some fan speculation that the year 90 from the Relay teaser can be a new calendar Reaper War Year Zero. That would be very interesting. I don't know, though. Wait, would you do that, though? To restart the calendar? I don't know. But again, like, they're just... Mass Effect team is so smart. The 90 could mean 2890. Could be 2190. Could be randomly 3390, right? Like, it could just be something we're not even considering, but... I think that would be interesting. Um, I'm not. I'm not too sure why, though. Right? Like, you wouldn't want to just reset the whole of Citadel calendar stuff just because a random event happened. But um, yeah, that's just my thoughts on it. Rex said that all Krogan named Shepard means hero. If he is alive, save Morning Data. Oh, really? Oh no, yeah. That there, there is something there. Hey, where uh, Rex says something. Rex does say something. Underestimate human shepherd, maybe. So I doubt the full shepherd crew could return as squad mates. Many of them would play major roles in their racist society. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's a tough one. It is very tough. And I also think like a lot of the Mass Effect 2 peeps and I wish... Oh, you know what? I think I have, I have destroy here, right? Where did I put it though? Yeah. So like all of the Mass Effect 2 peeps basically got wrap-ups um i think because they were like you know there's there's too many opportunities for the mass effect 2 people to die unfortunately so i feel like they had to provide a, an extended cut for all of them because they they probably were like all right we need to tie these plot threads off and you know so i do think it's unlikely that the mass effect 2 peeps will be in the next game um, or they'll have very minor roles. I'd love it if they, they had larger roles. But like, you know, Samara, uh, Jacob, Miranda, Kasumi, like Zaid, you see all of them, but you see none of the original. None of the original Normandy crew except for Rex, who could also die. So I feel like the extended cuts were very much like a, we're just gonna, we're just gonna wrap up the plot threads for everybody that has a high likelihood of dying and kind of keep open like you, you don't see you don't see Liara, you don't see Garrus, Tally, Joker, you don't see any of those people. Um, you don't see James, you don't see Javik, like anyone that could have only been killed in like a beam like scenarios, like the final beam run, you don't see an ending for them. That's pretty telling to me. Dr. Conrad Werner finds Shepard, rebuilds him with parts from, uh, where's hence the limp? Again, okay, the limp, guys. I I can't, I'm not seeing the limp. I thought I could see the limp at first, but I'm not seeing the limp. Here, let me... I legit, I was convinced. Because I, I I do see it, kind of, but I don't hear it. And I think that's the key. So let me just pause the music. Because you would be able to hear a limp, right? It would be, like, not even walking. There would be a clear, like, moment of stumble. You know, like, walk, stumble, walk, stumble, and it would be fast. And it just sounds like a very... Just listen to this. It's not, there's not stumbling, it's even. Like, where's the stumble? You know what I mean? There's no stumble, so I personally don't think that they're limping. But... Maybe I'm just hearing that wrong, but I'm not hearing stumble. Could be a revamped Omega, 100%, could be. It'd be interesting though, like Omega has a very particular vibe of being like, you know, a little bit more on the seedy side and, and you know, there's, there's like gangs go there to kind of like either start a fight or like, you know, do deals and stuff like that. So like this feels very professional and very like a certain clientele, um, which is why I don't think it's Omega. I think it's more Citadel style. Like the Hanner has armbands. Oh, really? I have not seen that. Let me go back to there. And then I'm going to jump into my thoughts on the uh, Epsilon Oculon Nebula thing for a little bit. Yeah, you're right, hey? I didn't notice that, but what is the best angle for this? Uh, da, 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 da. I did not notice this, but 
This Hanar, guys, has uh, little armbands. What the heck is up with that? <laughs> Do Hanar always have armbands? Maybe it's like their version of uh, fashion? We got uh, Geth wearing night clothes and we got Hanar. Hanar wearing armbands. Generic bar used to showcase all the, the races for hype. I don't know. I feel like there's a meaning. I feel like generally there's, you know, like this place is somewhere. Could be. Oh man, I just want that to be Garrus so bad, but I'm delusional, so. I am convinced that this is Ryder though, right in the middle over here with the Angara. Totally convinced it's Ryder. <laughs> Ryder wears that helmet. Geth romance went, Kala, I just... When we get the Geth romance, what will what will you do first? I mean, I think I know the answer to this, but I just want to get your thoughts on it. Would you do a playthrough where you follow through on the Liara romance, or would you want to instantly do and see the Geth romance? I think I know your answer, but I want to see if it's different from <laughs> what I think. Also, Blaze, do you think a big plot point would be the Citadel leaving Earth, going to location from the poster and concept art, especially since it seems abandoned in the concept art? That is a great question. So why did I move my camera back down? What's wrong with me? Um, okay, yeah, so with regards to this, um, I'm not sure the Citadel would leave Earth. Um, it was a pretty huge thing, you know, like the Citadel kind of moving above Earth, and then now there's a bunch of humans in this area, and I just can't shake the feeling that it's a Citadel location, you know? So I feel like if anything, I'll point to evidence of if this is the Citadel, then no. Um, but going to the location from the poster and concept art, I assume you mean the Geth poster um, specifically. I think that's the only that's the only poster that they've released, right? Or you could mean the if you mean the concept art, like the the car one, the car one over here. Um, yeah, okay, I'm too lazy to bring in the car thing, but. Um, since it seems abandoned in the concept art. Oh, you mean the, the Geth poster, hey? Because that one's abandoned. Um, I'd say no, but again, no evidence, just vibes. Uh, I think it would be more meaningful to keep the Citadel above Earth, considering like take back Earth and like all of the stuff from the trilogy. It would it would make a lot of sense. But uh, I also don't know like if we could move the citadel because it was the reapers that moved the citadel so like unless a whole bunch of ships just kind of <laughs> having the citadel making their way downtown or something like i don't i don't know i'd say not practical possible but not practical uh josu what is the species next to the angara are you talking about to the left are, are you talking i wish i had a thing that i could circle at will if you're talking about to the left I think it's Ryder, <laughs> so human. Uh, to the right, I think there's a Asari sitting there, and I, I think it's Liara. Could be, could be somebody else. And then obviously to the right of of the Asari sitting there is, is a Geth wearing night clothes. Um, but yeah, like I, I have heard people say that right in center screen to the, to the dude wearing the suit could be a Corian. I don't know. Again, can't see their legs. Like, it's just perfectly strategically hidden and just props to the Mass Effect team. But yeah, I don't know. I do think it's Ryder because there's an Angara right there and that makes sense. Star Wars did the same thing with the calendar after the Battle of Yavin. Yeah, like, they're, they're, you could. You could. Like, I'm not saying it's impossible. i just wondering, would they? I don't know. Maybe. That would imply that it's 90 years following the Reaper War, right? And that's what they're teasing, which would just be heartbreaking regardless, because, you know, only only the uh, the enhanced humans and, like, the uh, Krogans and Asari would be uh, the old characters that we could see. I don't think we'll see Miranda unless they uh, recast her. Don't recast Miranda and her butt. <laughs> Miranda has a very nice butt. 90 years is enough time to have some changes, not drastically in technology. Yeah. I mean, to me, it doesn't matter whether you're like nine years or, or 90 years out or 600. Whatever would kill a lot of like the original Normandy crews, like Joker and them, would just hurt. It would. 
Again, though, it's a sci-fi series. Like, there are going to be large time jumps. People are going to die, but it would just, it would hurt. Not if it's just a bit slower, slower step, almost like a drag. You would still hear a change, though. You would still hear a change. I know Jane is convinced that, yeah, there's a limp. I don't know. I don't, I don't see that. I, I, I could see the limp. Like, I understand what you guys are saying, but I can't hear it. And I feel like with limps, hearing it would be very specific. I don't know if that's just a difference between what the audio team did versus like the visual, because obviously it would be different teams, but I feel like they would, if they wanted that to be a hard point, then they would have, they would have pointed that out, you know? The right foot does seem slower. No, yeah, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. I just can't hear it. It's the shepherd walk. <laughs> we are not going to go down that road. Okay, we, we did the shepherd head turn. I refuse to go down. I refuse to go down the... <laughs> Is this Shepherd walking road? I love it. Panar workout armbands. Yes, 100%. Kala, I will follow Liara to the end of the universe. Let's go. <laughs> I'm gonna put that on this guy's 100% this, okay? <laughs> I was like... <laughs> I was thinking about this, right? Legit. People have said like, oh, what if Liara is like evil in the next game or something, right? I literally, if she's a bad guy, I will do whatever it takes to just try to be on her side. Even if it means screwing over the whole galaxy, because it would be so fun to just, you know, the, the classic line where she becomes the shadow broker and then she's like, give me 10 minutes and I could start a war, a war. I'm like, girl, do it, do it. I am behind you and I will, I will happily cheerlead as you destroy everybody um <laughs> just be so funny and like if there's like an impossible choice where like you're just a new protagonist right completely not related to shepherd or whatever and she's just like hey go jump out that airlock and let's see what happens and it would just be a choice if either jump out the airlock or don't i just do it i jump out the airlock and then the game would just end and i, I just wouldn't go against what she said because i'm like liara said to jump out the airlock It'd be highly amusing watching one of my playthroughs. Because I would just be doing really dumb things. The N7 is a shepherd clove from Cerberus? Could be. Could be. Liara has a Q following her. Yes, I'm also, I'm in the Q. I'm in Liara Q. Could it be Alec Ryder's dad when he was younger? I don't think the body shape would fit, Michelle. Um, I don't think the body shape would fit. Also, I am going to get to the Oculon... Uh, Epsilon Oculon Nebula thing. Um, I, I don't, I, I, it looks like a feminine shape. Alec Ryder has a very strong, like, masculine build. Um, I don't have any images of him, unfortunately, but, um, it just doesn't fit the, it doesn't fit the build. We have a chance for a Barlavon return? Yeah, more mercenary. I love Barlavon to return. Like, Barlavon was one of those iconic characters that you see in Mass Effect 1, just chilling in, like, the bank by by himself and I just really liked that it, it for some reason it helps world build for me you know like yeah the Volus are like in charge of the or just very money oriented and like you know markets oriented and stuff like that so I'd, I'd love a Barlavon return unless somebody in the chat's gonna say that Barlavon died and just shatter our dreams <laughs> I can't believe Emily Wong guys Emily Wong died for promo I can't I can't. When oh, Blaze is saying, uh, no, I'm not. I, I'm talking about this concept art with the ship flying over the dark citadel from the blog post. Oh, um, I don't actually know which one you're talking about. It's not the citadel tourism one, is it? One off. Um. A concept art with a ship flying over the dark citadel? I would have to look at that because I'm not too sure which one. I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Shepherd dance. The fact that it's still in pre-production means everything is subject to change? Oh no, yeah. Once this game to be closer to release, there's too much uh corporate business. No, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, no, it's a fair point. It is a fair point. I will go back to the fact, though, that when you're making... 
when you're making a game and you're in the creative process, you can't change a lot. Like if you keep flip-flopping, then you won't even come out with like, you won't even come out with the game. You know, like at some point you need to decide on something um, because of deadlines or what have you, but like they, they can't keep flip-flopping. I'm pretty sure anything that they release here is already solidly part of their plans, which is why they're showcasing it to us. Because can you imagine, like, it would totally destroy their credibility if everything they've teased so far is not what's going to be 100% in the next game. It would just destroy trust with the fan base, right? So I think they're very aware of that, and anything they've given to us so far has to be in the game. Because it would just, there would be a laughing stock, right? It would be like, there's no weird new N7 with the coat, and, you know, like, what does the Liara picking up the insignia mean, you know? Like, that's why I think that Everything we've seen so far, which isn't a lot, like they haven't shown us a lot, is definitely going to be in the next game. That's my thoughts on it. Again, they it could 100% be subject to change, but it would destroy their credibility. If like the game takes as long as it does to come out and then they didn't include the stuff they teased, that definitely rubs me the wrong way. Question, is it intentional or just the animation is a little off, which I doubt, but who knows? I don't know with the sound, <laughs> but I can fix her. No, 100%. We can fix the error. No, but here's the thing. I wouldn't even want to fix her. Like, the thing I love about the Liara romance is you never change her. Like, she's one of the few characters that, like, she will do whatever the heck she wants to do. Like, with Caden, with Garrus, um... You can influence them. You can influence their arc and how they're going to be. With Liara, she's like, nope, I'm going to be the Shadow Broker with or without you. Um, and that's why I, I really like that romance. Because it, it doesn't feel like a, a I can fix them scenario. It's just, you know, it's just a, it's a fun little romance that you just kind of love her for who she is, you know? That's what I like about it. It's really awesome. I really like your idea that it's an AI. I'd love it if it's an AI. It would be fun. Wong died on Twitter. Wait, did, did Craig, did Barlevon actually die in a Facebook post? I would, I would, I would cry literal tears. Don't do this to me. <laughs> in the first trailer with the Mass Effect under instruction, the static in the video looked like something not regular static. Something moving from, yeah. Um, <laughs> I assume you're talking about this. This is the last thing I promise. And then we're going to get into the last 30 minutes where I'm going to go over the, um, the uh, ec ep uh, Epsilon Oculon Nebula stuff. Um, are you talking about the distortion here, Josie? Let me know if you're talking about this distortion. Yeah, with the Mass Effect under construction. Yeah, um, I have thoughts on this. I was looking at this right before I went live. Um, and I do, you know, I, I definitely would. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't want to get into it here. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's, again, it's one of those things where it is a little bit more no evidence, just vibes. But I think I can get the evidence, kind of. So I might save this for a video. But I do think the distortion is important. And I feel like there was a Gamble tweet where somebody pointed out the distortion. And he said something akin to, like, everything's in there for a reason or something. So the distortion, obviously, very intentional. Um, like everything they put in here. And uh, I will get back to you on that because that video might be coming out either this month or sorry, next month. Um, probably more May time though, because I will say guys, like doing all these analysis videos back to back to back, it wears out my one and a half brain cells. <laughs> really does. The 2022 blog post. Okay, Blaze. Uh, I will check that out. I will check that out because I don't, I don't, Citadel? I, I feel like I've gone over all of the art, but if there is something that I have missed, I will definitely check that out. What would you do if they released the new Mass Effect game tomorrow? <sighs> I would stay up all night, waiting for it to come out. And then I'd probably stream the whole thing while high-pitched screaming and cry laughing. I'm messing with you. Okay, Craig, thanks. Because if 
I've already been devastated by Emily Wong dying, okay? I can't take a Barla Vaughn death too. All right, guys, let's go over the Epsilon Oculon Nebula stuff because I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on it. Here's the Epsilon one, and I don't think I... Oh, wait, yeah, I can get the other ones up here. So... Dream and somebody can't... Oh, I'm in the wrong thing. I'm in the wrong thing. What do you guys think the point of, like... Okay, the Andromeda Distress Signal, right? What do you guys think that part means? I'm going to try to save my thoughts for it because I don't want to bias anybody. I genuinely want to get your guys' thoughts on it. I don't think I've actually said my thoughts on this in any any form. Do you guys think that the Andromeda Distress Signal is a new thing? An old thing? Like, what do you guys think? And why, why are they teasing, like, an audio transcript from Liara? I just... I'm confused, but I want to hear your guys' thoughts while I try to get the other ones up here. Where the heck is it? I don't think I have it here. Oh, hang on. I'm going to have to pull it from this location. Here we go. Uh, Epsilon Oculon. This one. Oculon. And last one. Come yeah, on. Epsilon Oculon Nebula. Okay. <laughs> Struggle is so real to fit all these. Okay, hang on one sec. I need to make this top one a little smaller. Oh, you can barely see that one, but... Because, I, I, you know what? I have gone over my initial thoughts, so you guys might know a little bit of it. Okay, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hide this one. The last one we'll talk about. Last. All right, so. What are your guys' thoughts on this stuff? Oh, crap. Oh, and also Jane saying cloak chip for the distortion. Interesting thought. Interesting thought. Hold that thought until my analysis comes out, because, uh... Oh yeah, Pitney 4, Nif to call, man. Nif to call, Biotic God. Ambassador Dincor, like, yes, yep. There wasn't a lot of uh, Voli? Voluses? I kind of like Voli, but I don't know. Barlevon was in touch with the Shadow Broker, yeah. You know, some benefit from the Benefactor, if the Benefactor is, uh, whatchamacallit, Benefactor is uh, related to the, to the Shadow Broker. He explains the the new relay. Is this a new thing, Michael, or is this an old thing? The favorite store on the Citadel image and shows a ship flying above the Citadel with no power. What? Blaze, this is like the first time. From a blog post too? From the Bioware blog post. I'm gonna make a note to look up what this is. Yeah, let me know, Blaze, if it's from the Bioware blog post or... Never seen that before. Okay, Dorothy's saying Quarian Arc. Yeah, for the Andromeda Distress. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that is very interesting. Also, Light Shadow saying I think it has to do with the Quarian Arc. Andromeda sucks it into, right? I have thoughts again. I mean, I've said it multiple times. Andromeda doesn't suck. It's just... There's a lot. <laughs> I feel like I've ranted about Andromeda quite a bit, but I've come to terms with it. I've come to terms with it a lot. Also, why are we on the love theme? I kind of want to go to the... Uh... Talking about how Andromeda <laughs> does or does not suck with the love theme, though. I love how this this love theme has interesting interesting timings. I will say that. Okay, we're gonna go Citadel DLC music while we talk about this. Yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting if it's the Corian arc, right? Because let me just Google something really quickly. The 
Quarian Arc sent out a distress signal. Because in the next one, right? It's 2819. Did it send out a distress signal in 2819? I don't think so. Right? Because 2819 is when the Nexus arrived? I think? The fact it's called Andromeda Distress Signal suggests that it is a signal from Andromeda, not necessarily the Andromeda Initiative, i.e. not the... That's an interesting point. That is an interesting point. I'm gonna just check... No, you know what? Not Andromeda Initiative. I wanna check... Does anybody know when the Nexus arrived? Oh no. <laughs> I'm getting Nexus mods. Because it arrived and then immediately sent out a distress signal, right? See, this is just sadness. I don't know this off the top of my head because I just... I don't know Andromeda stuff, unfortunately. Okay, I'm gonna click here and see... Launched... Wait a second, guys. Oh no, yeah, yeah. Launched in 2185. 600-year journey. And they arrived in... Why is this not available freely on the wiki? Does anyone off the top of their head know when, <laughs> when the Nexus arrived? Because I can't find it. Even the wiki is sadness. Hyperion. Okay, I'm going to click on the Hyperion. Arrived 14 months after the Nexus, which is and it's just refusing to give me a time. I'm going to assume it was 2819. Because I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure the Nexus arrives, right? And then in one of the first uh, Mass Effect books that covers... Um, oh, what's her face? Sloan Kelly. Um, she might have been on board the Nexus when the Andromeda Distress Signal was sent from the Nexus. Because they did send out a signal. They just didn't know if it was getting through to anybody. I'm pretty sure... And I'm pretty sure the Quarian arc, it can't have been 2819 because when they sent out a distress signal, it was like 25 something. Like they were centuries out still. Like a couple centuries. So I don't think that's it. Classified part of Oculon reminds me of the relay teaser. Oh, that's interesting, Dorothy. Arrived one to two years prior. Um, Yes, yeah, yeah, 14 months prior. But does anyone know the timing? 2819 Hyperion arrives and the Nexus is already there. So the Hyperion sent out the distress signal? Here's my thing, right? I'm going to give you guys some of my thoughts on this because I think I've, I've already gone over this in a video. But, like, this is clearly from the Systems Alliance, right? Because at the end, the last thing that you see is, you know, post Nebula, warning, security breach detected, contact Systems Alliance. This is probably, like, you know, we're kind of slowly getting like packets of information so we as like the, the protagonist in this kind of case we're getting this from the systems alliance the system alliance getting the andromeda distress signal first of all that that would kind of make sense but then <laughs> again i just this whole thing is so mind-bending because i just finished telling you guys that i do think the game is going to be closer to the reaper war so how and why are they getting a distress signal? Like, why would the Systems Alliance be aware of something sent in 2119? It just doesn't make any sense. Because they're also kind of including in the package, although they should know by now not to underestimate human redacted, which is human defiance from the Liara thing that we get during the relay teaser. Just doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> why the Systems Alliance would be receiving a distress signal in the year 2819. It just, it, it doesn't make sense to me. And I know, yeah, you guys are saying like Quarian Arc and stuff. I just, I haven't been able to piece that together because nothing we've seen so far to me indicates that it's a 600 year time jump. It just doesn't make sense. The Nexus waiting for the other arc. Nobody was making it over Andromeda until 2819. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Craig, for the two uh, pounds. Getting pretty late here, so gotta go night all. Thank you so much, Craig, for all the, uh, for all the laughs and I'm so sorry. I forgot, I forgot initially. <laughs> you told me, you literally told me. Takes to no games, but uh, thank you so much for being here. And yeah, it's super late over there. It is super late over there. Uh, I'll probably just uh, wrap up with my thoughts on this soon as well. So uh, thank you so much for being here.
Okay, so Kevin's saying Riders Rather was already awake in. I assume you didn't mean 2019, 2819, as opposed to 2019. Analyzing Habitat 7 is sorry. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. I knew Garson's murderer, yes. Garson was awake 14 months before the Hyperion and then got murdered, yep. Which means that the distress signal was sent from the Hyperion. Which I'm not sure what that would change, but it is very strange to me. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense, guys. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me. I'm still working through this specifically. And obviously I've said before, like, for the second one, it's very clearly from the Systems Alliance because it says classified review briefing materials on official Alliance comms channels. So it's not like saying in the last teaser, it's not like saying contact Systems Alliance and it's not somebody from the Systems Alliance. Like it's a different organization being like, hey, go contact our buddies. Because it, it literally says in the second one, review briefing materials on official Alliance comms channels. So we are, as the protagonist in this case, un like kind of uh, uncovering everything. We're part of the Systems Alliance, contacting the Systems Alliance for help. And then we're randomly seeing an N7 at the end of all this with the phrase Oculon or Epsilon Oculon Nebula. Like it's just, there's, there's, there's so much. There's so much with this that I mean, I have said this before, but I do think that the N7, I think I have a brighter version of this where it looks like the N7 has stolen something because there's randomly something in their pocket right there, like right here, right, right to the left of my cam. It looks like there's something in their pocket. Like it's clearly just bulging. And I personally think they stole something. And I find it very interesting that there's really strange music, like sinister music, with a tease that says, Contact Systems Alliance, and then shows us an N7. Just all rubs me kind of the wrong way. Hyperion never had contact with the Nexus, so though, my thought is the Nexus sent a message after Garson's death. But wouldn't they have sent it right away? Like, why wait two years for when the Hyperion rocks up, then send a distress signal? And so none of the other arcs were in touch with the Nexus. They were lost in some way. There's no messing with time. Then I have no idea what is going- Exactly! Like, it just- Which is why I think there's gonna be weird stuff going on. There's gonna be weird stuff. Uh, Dorothy, it's not the pistol. It's not the pistol, because if you look, if I keep playing it here, they don't take it from uh, their pocket. They take it from uh, from there, the inside of the jacket. So let me just keep playing this here. I thought it was the gun too. I thought it was the gun too. Let's see, look, like that's their hip down there. And then when they reach for their gun, it is right in there. Like, see, it's, it's at the top where their high collar is. So it's not the gun. What the heck is in there? Old picture of Liara. No, of, of course, of course. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Imagine if it's not even just Shepard. It's just a random old picture of Liara. That'd be so weird. <laughs> and we don't know who this is. <laughs> that would be so funny. Space hamster. Oh, no. Yeah, Jane. Of course. <laughs> Forget about the Krogan, guys. There's a space hamster in this N7's pocket. Totally. Totally, totally. Imagine if we could see it, like, moving around, too. <laughs> it's the one thing that this N7 has. Just a space hamster. I love it. <laughs> oh, man. I love it. So Ninfree, uh, I should DM you. I think I know the whole plot or as I'm crazy as, as you. Feel free. You can either just comment it. You can comment it on, on any of my videos. I, I usually see it. Uh, or I also have a, an email if it's going to be so long. I love to hear your thoughts. And legit, like, I've, I've gotten sent a few of your guys' theories and um, I appreciate them. And 100%, like... I will totally cover it if I, again, it goes through my process of like, okay, can I poke holes in this? You know, if I can't really poke holes in this, then I usually, I usually cover it. And give you guys full credit as well, obviously, because that would just be absolutely dumb if I didn't. Pistol's on the left. It's on the inside of their area. Dark Energy will not give you time jump. It didn't in Andromeda. 
not if it's not dark energy though. They're iPhone 80. <laughs> yeah, and it's just huge, guys. The iPhone 80 just got a huge upgrade. Like, look at how big. It could be an entirely separate gun. Like, we, we don't know. It's gonna be so long. Do it. Do it, Nenfreak. I will read the whole thing. Totally. But also keep in mind, like, the way that I go run with my videos is if I can poke holes in it, though, and if there's not at least, like, two to three pieces of solid evidence for each point, I probably won't cover it. But regardless, I, I will read it. One thing is it seems like this N7 stripe is thinner than the one in the relay image. Yeah. I... That, that's the thing, right? That's the thing also, Blaze, that I'm just like, look, so we're looking at the N7 arm right here, right? This N7 stripe is much thinner than the traditional, so I have it here, is much thinner than the traditional one, which you can see on the, uh, what, what are directions? Um, <laughs> to the left slash right. <laughs> it was right by my camera. Let me just, I, I lost my camera. Lost my camera. Moving back, moving back, moving back. Yeah, so the stripe is like, it's right beside me, right? Compared to this one. It's like, it's like the, the, the little, like, uh, sleek version. The, 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 because, <laughs> you know, like, there's different versions of merch where you get, like, the version of, like, um, where you want to be just loud and proud with, like, wearing your N7, like, hoodie and stuff like that. But then there's also the like, I want to be more subtle with my fandom and stuff. This is like the subtler N7 stripe because it's not as big. <laughs> oh man, I love it though. Legit though, uh, so for those who don't know what Blaze is talking about, on the SA intercepts, if I can make this larger here, there is an N7 stripe in the bottom left corner Which bothers me so much. It bothers me that they included this. And it's not it's not as uh as thin as the other one. This is this is like I, I subscribe to this being an N7 stripe as opposed to the Krogan thing, because I can actually see this one. So to the left of my camera here, there is an N7 stripe. You'd have to like kind of look at the, the thingy. Uh apply like a like a red or a white filter to it. But um yeah, you can kind of see it. I, I'll, I'll put it in a video. It will definitely be in my N7 intercept video for sure. Um, but yeah, it compared to this one, I just feel like the, the, the red part of the N7 stripe is much thicker. This one's like the, the subtle, the subtle I'm an N7. <laughs> Look to it. Uh, do, do, do. If you play it through on Andromeda again, Garson knew people were after her on the Nexus. Yep, 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 yep. This section is like a mystery? Yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%. Might have left a message of distress before she died. Let's hide. Maybe they skipped some space somewhere. Yeah, I don't know. The Garson mystery stuff, I was shocked it wasn't main plot. Because that was what I was interested in, you know? The first thing you see when you pop out as Ryder out of your cryopod is the Garson info wall. So I was like, where's Garson, you know? And then everyone's like, oh, she's dead. And then it's not, it's not like huge. Also, we somehow arrived at Shepherd, Shepherd's Tangle again. Again. Oh, let me just quickly, oh, I'll pop it onto, let's go over Jack. Crucible sent massive amounts of dark energy throughout the whole galaxy. It wasn't limited to a field like the Scourge. State of the dark energy in the Scourge affects time. Ninfreak, I feel like the, the thing that you're gonna send me is very like, it's going to be very close to what I also think. Wondering how many races are hidden away in dark corners of the galaxy like Viathan? Yeah. Oh, 100%. 100%. What I have to do to merge the two timelines and say that it calls time to speed up temporarily? Yeah, I mean, it is It is interesting. It is It is an interesting... I guess my, yeah, my, my takes a little bit more to do with black holes to merge the timelines, but... Uh... Gamble did do that one tweet where the Milky Way and Andromeda were kind of smashing into into each other. So, yeah, it's 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 an interesting discussion for sure. Um, okay, guys, it is getting pretty late over here. I just glanced at the clock, um, and 
I do know that my pup is probably having a mental breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere um so i am just gonna why is this so small all of a sudden that's weird um i'm just gonna where's my thingy where's my thingy i'm gonna be ending off because i'm pretty sure i need to go on pup duty and i need to go edit the videos <laughs> that i'm promising to all of my paragon prime peeps and above so let me just pop over here really quickly um would you do a live stream of Mass Effect Trilogy and Andromeda on this channel if possible? 100%. So that is something that I did want to ask you guys. I will probably put the a poll up for my members um, for which playthrough you guys want to see first. Um, I wouldn't mind doing from the Trilogy to Andromeda. However, I do think I really have to do an Andromeda one because, again, I'm just not familiar with the stuff and I played it, you know, with my eyes half closed and everything like that, so... Um, I definitely will have to do an Andromeda one now that it's that there's been some time. I've, I've had time to process <laughs> Andromeda and stuff. So I think I might do Andromeda. Um, maybe as early as May or something, if you guys are interested in that. Because um, I think I should be done my second analysis of everything by then. Um, so yeah, 100%. And whatever you guys want to see in terms of the live streams playthroughs I will totally do like I don't mind doing challenge runs I don't mind doing like all of that stuff so uh, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on it but I do think that I'll put a poll up for my members so they would get the, the final say there when did the scourge happen I don't know I don't know that off the top of my head which is why I'd have to do an Andromeda playthrough because I just don't know why then had my control before you end look at the 2022 blog blaze I legit I I have to go check on my pup <laughs> I do apologize. I promise I'll check it as soon as I'm as soon as I'm off. I don't even know where I would go to look. So uh, hold that thought. I'll probably look at it uh, next time. Or if you leave a comment, I think you can leave a link in the comment for it because I can't find it. Yes to Andromeda. Crucible called the Scourge. The people have definitely had those thoughts. Oh yeah, Dorian had my control too. Definitely. 60 hours average to take. Oh yeah, no, 100%. I like to experience it though, you know? Like, it would definitely. But yeah, guys, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Apologies, Blaze. I will definitely go check that out because I'm shocked that I don't know this thing that you're talking about off the top of uh, off the top of your, uh, your head. Also, I'm so sorry, I had the desktop audio playing too. That must have been confusing for you guys. Um, so yeah, guys that is all thank you guys so much for being here legit it was so 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 much fun and i will catch you guys next time um so with you <laughs> let's go zero brains <laughs> me and my one and a half brain cells and you colin zero brains never say bye see you soon definitely guys i will probably next be live uh end of april the week of either probably the maybe as late as april 30th it could be early may um my next video is coming out on april 1st for the public and uh the trailer breakdown video hopefully dropping on april 8th so look forward to that otherwise guys that is it for me thank you guys so much for being here really 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 appreciate it i'm atharia and this and mass effect is my favorite franchise on the citadel see you guys later